Leicestershire, who put the allegation to her on camera. The footage of it was aired on Thursday. Leicestershire police won't name her, as they say that's a matter for the coroner, but they confirmed officers were called when the body of a woman was found in a hotel room in Leicester. They say they aren't treating her death as suspicious. The man in charge of the new Thameslink franchise has infuriated the unions with comments about his overcrowded trains. The chief executive of Govia Thameslink, Charles Horton, says his trains will be more comfortable to stand up in. Jane Killick reports. One of the biggest complaints from commuters on the Bedford to Brighton line is the lack of seats, with passengers often forced to stand for their entire journey. Mr Horton says although he can't promise that people won't stand on trains into central London, he can promise that because of new standing areas, they'll be more comfortable. The RMT union says with Thameslink users being charged some of the highest fares in the country, it's a shocking statement from the boss of a brand new franchise. An alcohol-free zone could be introduced at a park in Luton to stop people drinking there. Parents say they're avoiding the play area in Windsor Street because it's overrun with drunks. But these drinkers say they're not the ones causing the problems. You do get a lot of Polish and stuff in there and throwing stuff everywhere and all that before they go to work in the mornings. But us ourselves, we walk to the bins, you know what I mean? We haven't got a drink problem. We sit in flats every day. We're lonely watching Jeremy Kyle. On sport, the Formula One driver Jules Bianchi has been undergoing emergency surgery for a severe head injury after he crashed during the Japanese Grand Prix. The incident brought an early end to the race, which was won by Hertfordshire's Lewis Hamilton. And the weather will be wet and windy for most of the day. Top temperatures around 14 degrees Celsius. That's 57 degrees Fahrenheit. You can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Hey, Lee, Lee, mm. Lee. I, sorry, that... There's a, there's a technical problem in this studio, OK? Mm-hmm. And it, I, sh- just let everyone... Sh- 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 I don't know. Can you hear that buzz? A little bit, maybe. Right. Well, in, in trying to locate the buzz, mm. it's the racks. <laughs> Steady, guys. Uh, and w- that we've basically... I found the switch that turns the radio off. Really? I can tell... Yeah, can you tell us what you had for, for supper last night, Lee. OK, um... There we go. See, I turned it off! This is brilliant! Uh, Lee, thank you very much. Today on BBC Three Counties Radio. From nine. The JVS Show. With the big phone in, the hottest topic of the day, and your consumer problems. From 12. Nick Coffer. With Fiona Bateson, she's a clinical audiologist here to answer any questions you may have about your own hearing. From three. Roberto Peroni. I'm here with a roundup of the day's news, the latest travel, and your stories. From six. Three Counties Sport. With a look back at the weekend's action and take Taking a look at the grassroots sport across beds, hearts and bucks. Today on BBC Three Counties Radio. Morning! Ha ha! I found the button that switches the radio off and it's big and it's red. Look, you just press that. It's the coolest thing in the world, honestly. We'll get a picture of that button. It's awesome. Forget everything else we have planned for the show, guys. What we're talking about today is I've never seen that button before. 08459 four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. We, we have got other stuff. We've got, we've got human rights, diamond whites, and a reporter fueled by Marley lights. <laughs> it's good, yeah, isn't it? that's one of mine. All right, Catherine, oh. we're, we're all one team here. All oh, right, so when they're rubbish, you say who wrote that, and when yeah. they're good, you well, claim it. When they're good, I just made them up spontaneously. Wow. So, uh, but that's, and that's all happening, but the main thrust of this morning's show is, I'd never seen that button before, 08459 four double five five double five. I've never... Can you hear that buzz, or is it just... Can you not hear it? The buzz is your own. Mm. And boy, what a buzz we've got for you this morning, huh? Huh? Mark's in Milton Keynes. Good morning, Mark. Oh, he's gone. Mark, you butler. That's because you messed you him about. Huh? I did. I cut him off. Oh, this is broken. The power hang to on, cut people off on, as well. Hang on, hang on. Here we Man go. Man alive! What fun! I've never seen that button before. Mark's on the line. Mark, you there? Wait a minute, hang on. Oh, I'm, I'm Hi, only Mark. Here, I'm, I'm only here put, till nine. I'll put you through again if that's all right. Mm. Thank you. Fade a one. Morning, Mark. Mark. 
Mark? 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 Hi, Ian. Hey! Uh, I'm on the M1 at the moment. I don't know if people are aware, but at ten past five, it came to a complete standstill between Newport Pagdor Services oh. and Junction 15. Oh, do we know why? Um, well, you, your colleagues on the early breakfast show were reporting that it's a Woody and a car accident oh, in the blimey. outside lanes, but nothing has moved in, in the last three quarters of an hour. Oh, blimey. Um, uh, have you got a cold? No. You need tunes. Uh, Mark, well, listen, so you've been stuck there, not moving. Frustrating, huh? Yeah, it's big time. Oh, blimey. What time, wh- wh- where are you trying to get to and what time do you need to be there? Uh, there's, there's no rush on the first job that I'm doing, but I've got to be in Banbury by about 7 o'clock. Oh, blimey. Well, listen, I wish, I wish you the best of luck, Mark. Thank you for letting us know. Yeah. Just tell us where that is again, please. Yeah, it's northbound on the M1 between Newport Pagnell Services well, and Junction 15. Let's hope that uh, everyone involved is all right. Mark, before you go, have you ever discovered a button you'd never seen before? No. Thanks very much for calling. weekend he was pre- Paul Revere and the Raiders were one of the most mental bands of the 60s go and YouTube them okay uh, they would they were like huge in the states had no impact here at all and they would dress up as um, um, American uh, war of independent soldiers and play a uh, light 60s rock like that and we lost Paul Revere and he was absolutely bonkers oh eight four five nine four double five five double five now Scrapping the Human Rights Act would be a massive mistake. That's according to a Buckinghamshire woman who's been granted the chance to have her late husband's baby. Beth Warren has been speaking out in response to the Conservatives' pledge to take European Court of Human Rights from UK law should they win the next election. We'll be speaking to Beth a little bit later on, but it's, uh, I've been finding all of this talk over the weekend a little bit confusing. So Paul Scoyne, uh, our political reporter, is here to explain things. Paul, uh, thank you for coming in at Silly O'Clock. Human rights... It's often in the papers in, as, as, uh, uh, oh, these human rights, uh, the human rights laws means that prisoners get playstations and we can't deport um, Iraqi murderers and things like that. But there's more to it than that, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, it basically comes from uh, the act which, which come, really just stems from the, the Second World War. I mean, the, the Euro, uh, Europe as it was then uh, had obviously a sort of history of tyranny in certain countries and it was felt that they wanted to have a sort of a, a, a series of fundamental rights, freedom to expression, freedom to movement and so on, which, which some people in this continent didn't have. And and that was the sort of European Convention on Human Rights and then subsequently our own rights within this country had generated for hundreds of years but were formed into this Human Rights Act which effectively took the same sort of um, 
form as that. And if you talk to you know pro uh, liberty groups like Liberty, for example, they say uh, that there are a number of cases which have um, sort of highlighted fundamental unfairness, which have been overturned mm. by the Human Rights Act and the, and the European Convention on Human Rights. So. Why are the Tories so keen to scrap it? Because it, it, was a, it was a real big speech the other day. This is kind of one of their big selling points for the next election. Why do they want to get rid of it? Well, like you say, there's been a long-standing uh, opposition from the Conservatives to this Act, and they say that it's led to some perverse court rulings. Uh, Theresa May talks about uh, the violent drug dealer who can't be sent home because his daughter uh, lives there, or the robber who uh, can't be removed because he has a girlfriend, uh, the illegal immigrant, she says, because you can't be deported because he had a pet cat. Um, there have been some other uh, sort of uh, more controversial, perhaps, um, uh, cases such as control orders, which the government wanted to bring in to limit the movement of sus- suspected terrorists, detention without trial or uh, charge as well. Remember the uh, the 90 day detention uh, sort mm. of, uh, that was then sort of brought around and, and changed and brought down. DNA database. Gosh, so, so hang on, human rights stopped um, people being held without any charge? Yeah. Gosh, that's awful, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, the supporters would say that actually there's a number of cases, such as, you know, if you're a soldier on a military base in Iraq, you have a fundamental, arguably, a, a, uh, a right to life in certain areas or a right to quality of life. Uh, the naming of a deceased father on birth certificates, that mm. was that was not permissible until the the, uh, the the rights changed under that. There was also a case of a local authority that was uh, sort of had set up surveillance of a mother and her children to determine whether or not she lived within a school catchment area. And the local authority used its um, powers to basically survey her secretively. And they were found to have broken the, the act there as well. Um, I mean, supporters locally, we've got, of course, the former Attorney General, who is uh, Dominic Grieve, and Mm -hmm. he's been speaking out against it in the uh, recent days, especially after the Conservatives announced this change. The idea that we can somehow negotiate uh, an agreement with the Council of Europe that the court judgments don't apply to us but apply to everybody else when they're made is, I think, fantasy. The the court would disappear. It It would not be able to survive such a change. Uh, it's been applied in a number of local cases, hasn't it? Yeah. Do you remember the uh, the uh, the hacker um, Gary McKinnon? Oh yes, yes, yes. He broke into a... the Pentagon to look for aliens. Yes, indeed. And uh, he he was going to go to what well, was going to uh, Americans try to get him extradited over there. And uh, the oh. case of uh, his autism effectively uh, allowed you know the the European Court of Human Rights took it to that, and they ruled against that. And later, you'll be speaking to Beth Warren, who's mm. from Newport Pagnell now. She won the right to have a child using her uh, deceased husband's sperm, thanks to Article 8 of the Human Rights Act, which actually enshrines respect for privacy and family life. And um, Beth Warren says that the Human Rights Act was pivotal to her winning her case and has changed her life. The Human Rights Act, which was the winning argument for my two-year legal battle, and this meant that it's given me the time not to have to force into getting pregnant. And without it, there's a massive chance that I would be... With a child now, I couldn't have finished my university course, probably be claiming benefits. Really, I, that wasn't the life that I wanted, whereas now I've become a physiotherapist and I can look forward to the future. I, I've Really, it would be a terrible thought to think what would have happened if I hadn't have won my case. Warren and I had plans that we would have a family together, but we also made plans for what would happen if he wasn't here, and I needed that choice. People have had the same conversation with me since my legal battle of how the Human Rights Act protects the wrong people. But I think it's just that a lot of the cases where it protects the right people maybe aren't brought to the forefront of the media. And it's cases like me, I'm one of many people that it's done such massive things to improve, well, to not even improve my life, but just give me back that life that I should have had, to give me back my life. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off this morning on the M1 heading northbound. It's closed at the moment between Junction 14 for Milton Keynes and Junction 15 for Northampton. It's all due to an accident that happened a little earlier on this morning. At the moment there is a diversion via the hollow diamond symbol. The M1 heading southbound also seeing delays there as people seem to be slowing down uh, between Junction 15A for Toaster and Junction 14 at Milton Keynes. So far taking a look at the M25, a little bit busy between Junction 25 for Enfield and Junction 27 at 
for the M11. There are some roadworks taking place there, causing a few delays. So far on the trains, everything's looking good. No problems or delays. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Right, 6.16, it's Monday the 6th of October. I'm Ian Lee, these are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman from Newport Pagnell who's been given the right to have her late husband's baby says the Tories are wrong to scrap the Human Rights Act. Police have found a woman who sent abusive messages to the parents of Madeleine McCann dead at a hotel in Leicester. The Formula One driver Jules Bianchi has been seriously injured in a crash at the Japanese Grand Prix. BBC Three Counties Radio. Don't listen to the radio, watch these guys. On Inside Out, eight years on from the Ipswich prostitute murders, we show how dangerous the sex industry still is and reveal that underage girls are offering services online. The internet is a a beast, a beast that is growing out of control. And how do we stop it? How do you build an island from underground London to the Essex coast? We follow soil from the capital that's making a new haven for wildlife. A former jihadist warns young Muslims not to fight in Syria or Iraq. I still think I was honest in those days, but ill-informed, ignorant, misinterpreting. Inside Out with me, David Whiteley. Tonight, 7.30 on BBC One. Is it all in that pretty little head of yours? What goes on in that place in the dark? Well, I used to know a girl and I could have sworn that her name was Veronica. Well, she used to have a carefree mind of her own and the delicate look in her eye. These days I'm afraid she's not even sure if her name is Veronica. Did the favors wane? Did he roam down the town all the while? As you wake from your dream with a wolf at the door, reaching out for Veronica. Well, it was all of 65 years ago when the world was the street where she lived. And a young man sailed on a ship in the sea with a picture of Veronica. I'm the Empress of India. upon the world and bit upon a play of last week's news She spoke his name Sits in a favorite chair As they come with a regular pill And they call her a name That they never get right While telling her that she must sit still But she always had a carefree mind of her own With a devilish look in her eye Saying you can call me anything you like But my name is Veronica and Luton. Morning, Pete. Hello, my friend. How are you? I'm really excited. I have found the button that turns off the radio. We're asking this morning for your stories about I'd never seen that button before. What you got for us, Pete? Right, the first one was I bought a uh, teddy bear at a car boot sale. Yeah. Which I liked. 
Yeah, yeah, of course you do. You see, you go to a car boot sale, you see a dirty old teddy bear, and yeah. you buy it. Yeah, yeah. I, looked, I looked into it further, and it had a button in its left ear. Ooh. And I've now looked into it even further, and it is a Stife teddy bear, what? which is worth um, more than the one pound fifty I paid for it. Oh, you mean it's got like a, a, a coat button in its ear? It, it's, it's got a little button in its ear, and on the back part of the button it says Stife. From which is a which is a, a very rare teddy bear. They're so. worth. Uh, well, have you had it valued? Um. I've had it valued by a couple of people. The first one, I didn't think, give me a true valuation. In other words, it was less than you hoped for. Yes, but it's worth more uh, than my one pound fifty I paid for. Go Considerably on. amount. Give more. us, give us the figures, Pete. It's worth about a hundred, uh, between about one hundred and fifty, one hundred and sixty pound. Flipping heck, that's um, uh, an increase of over one million percent. I know, in it, love. I can actually say I'm a millionaire that way. Exactly. But I found another button as well. Yeah, go on. And this one uh, was 40 years ago, and it was my dear lady's belly button. Had she never seen it before? Well, I hadn't. Ladies and gentlemen, Pete and Luton, thank you very much indeed. Are you still here, Scoins? Fixed your computer. I d- uh, well, technically... Oh, yeah, you have. Nice one. You can go now. <laughs> All right. I wait four five nine four double five five double five. Justin, we're going to ask you to take this to the streets later mm, on. I'm looking forward to it. Ever, I, I found the button that turns the radio off. I don't get what you're talking about, but both. Okay, I'll get you. Yeah, you see? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably knackering everybody, all the transmitters across the country. Yeah. I don't care. I found a big red button. We're going to tweet a picture of it. It turns the radio off. Buttons, you... I'd never seen that button before. <laughs> I wait four five nine four double five five double five. Oh, dangerous bad boy. Dangerous. But by the way, just very quickly, you, you know your music. No one in this country knows who Paul Revere, indeed, the Raiders were. Mm, my D- dad does. Really? Yeah, I told him yesterday about the sad news, and straight away he got the CD out, he put it on. Kicks was the first uh, track I heard yesterday. That man is a legend. We, do you know what? We're pl- I'm going to play a Paul Revere song every day this week, because they're a brilliant 60s band. They never had a hit over here. Mm. They didn't come over here until 1969, uh, when they supported the Beach Boys, way past their prime. Yep. And they were nuts! They dressed up as soldiers from the American <laughs> War of Independence. <laughs> they were just a fantastic band, a great sound, and great characters as well. Wonderful, and very sad that he's gone, so we're going to play some Paul Revere songs every day. Anyway, on to slightly more serious things. On Thursday, we told you how parents are avoiding a play area, a park, in Windsor Street in Luton, because, well, it's where the local street drinkers hang out. Here's what people had to say. They come sitting on the bench drinking, a few of them, over there laughing, swearing, whatever. But uh, adults, no kids. And how many are we talking about here? Yeah, half a dozen. And how long has it been going on for? Uh... As far as I can recollect, 18 months now. And have they ever said anything to you, no. asked you for money, or said no, anything no. horrible to you? Nothing, really. They just talk amongst themselves, you know, and garbled rubbish to talk about. Do you feel quite threatened walking through this Not area? Not really, no, because I can handle myself, you see. Uh, well, park's OK. As I said, the, the, the few, few of the people that are in here, some of the drunks are OK. Not a problem. It's just one or two of the others that have no respect for what you consider normal behaviour. Uh, blatantly urinating, being reasonably open about it. I mean, I've seen it happen, and it's not something I particularly want to see. And I don't really think the children or anyone else should be put up with it. It's disgusting. Unfortunately, that's what comes with drinking too much. Uh, no, Justin, we had a very disappointing response from Luton Borough Council last mm. week, didn't they? They said uh, there was nothing they could do as there are no laws preventing people from drinking in parks. Well, what if that tipple of choice is meths? Yeah. You've been on the quest for answers. You weren't happy with this, were you? Well, I think well, I think everyone in the building wasn't happy with it. Um, we certainly weren't satisfied with that response from Luton Borough Council on Thursday. Uh, they've now sat down and thought about this in a bit more detail, and uh, we're told there are things that they can do after all so we seem to be moving here in the right direction one of those possible actions could involve setting up an alcohol free zone which would hopefully prevent people drinking in the play area in Windsor Street there's already a similar scheme which operates in some areas of the town centre and that's not all as well there's also talk of getting help and support for those people currently
currently drinking in the park. Well, that's, that seems an excellent way of tackling both issues, doesn't it? I think it? so. Now, on Friday, I actually went back to the area, uh, Windsor Street Park, and I asked some of the drinkers there that there was two in the park at that particular moment. That was about 12.30 on Friday. I asked them why they thought it was acceptable to consume alcohol in a children's play area. Uh, basically, at the end of the day, we live in flats that haven't got gardens and stuff like that, and it's a nice sunny morning, and it's easier to socialise. We sit here, we don't bother nobody, we tidy up after ourselves. But families are saying to us that they're not using this area anymore because it's surrounded you know by what, people drinking. You know what, mate? Yeah, you've come in now, you're sticking a microphone in my face and you're interrogating me. Yeah, I don't really want to talk about it anymore, to be honest with you, yeah? Well, it started off pleasantly mm. and it ended a little bit sour. There's more to it than that, is there? Yeah, you'll certainly hear that uh, audio in full after seven. Let's just say it's, um, it's interesting. I'm also told that Bedfordshire police uh, have increased patrols in the South Ward area of Lucen, where this play area is. Uh, we did actually want to talk to the council this morning but uh, in something of an own goal they've actually decided not to put anybody up for interview which is a great shame. We've also contacted one of the war councillors for the area Sean Timoney who is the deputy leader of Lucenborough Council but uh, sadly again she has yet to get back in touch with us as for Beds Police they weren't in a position to comment either we were told. Uh, an alcohol free zone you see that, uh, that in towns quite often how would it work? Well yeah in some some parts of the town, anybody caught drinking outside can be arrested and face a fine of up to £500. But in saying that, Ian, um, I'm often seeing people still drinking cans of lager in Lucent Town Centre. Supporters say that this is an excellent way of, of nipping any potential problems in the bud. Uh, the alcohol-free zone in Lucent currently lies within Telford Way, Mill Street, Midland Road, Church Street, St Mary's Road, Park Viaduct, Stewart Street and Dunstan row but as I say despite those fines and despite the fact you can be arrested often and I'm sure our listeners will back me up here um, people are still drinking on the streets of Luce and so if they can't solve it in the town centre how on earth can they solve it in a park which is isolated and um, a little way from the town centre now Justin you are excuse me one of our most intrepid and brave reporters and you um, you don't blanch in the face of anything you go straight in there and mm. you, you deal with these things is it true you took five people down to the park with you the other day. <laughs> I took four people. Oh, is that okay? I took four, but I think you've got to understand, you've got to appreciate on Thursday, I spoke to you at about, what, 7.45am, yeah. there was already eight people drinking in that children's play area. For people who know that area, Windsor Street in Lucent, yeah. it is quite isolated, it is quite away from the town centre. I wasn't prepared at that moment to go into that park to take on eight people. <laughs> and God bless you for, for being sensible, Justin. We're going to hear that full interview uh, after seven. Absolutely. Excellent stuff indeed. And if you would, I'd never seen that button before. Yeah. <laughs> can you do it? I'll tell you what, you've had some great stories already. Um, let's see if I can take you to the streets and make it work. <laughs> Justin, thank you very much indeed. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio on the M1. Heading northbound's closed at the moment between Junction 14 for Milton Kings and Junction 15 for Northampton. Now this is all due to an accident that happened a little earlier on this morning. So there is a diversion in place at the moment um, following the hollow diamond symbol. Also looking rather busy on the M1 southbound stretch as people sort of slow down there between Junction 15A for Toaster and Junction 14 for Milton Kings. We'll keep an eye on that on camera for you. The M25 starting to build up anti-clockwise between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 20 for Kings Langley. So far, checking on the trains and not seeing any problems on the departure boards across the three counties. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Six, I'm Lee Agnew. The headline, Scrapping the Human Rights Act, would be a massive mistake, according to Beth Warren from Buckinghamshire, who's been granted the chance to have her late husband's baby. The Conservatives have pledged to remove the act from UK law if they win the next election. A woman accused of an online hate campaign against Madeleine McCann's parents has been found dead at a hotel. 63-year-old Brenda Leyland sent them abusive messages on Twitter. The man in charge of the new Thameslink franchise has infuriated the unions 
with comments about his overcrowded trains. The chief executive of Govia Thameslink, Charles Horton, says his trains will be more comfortable to stand up in. And the weather will be wet and windy for most of the day. Top temperatures around 14 degrees Celsius. That's 57 degrees Fahrenheit. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hertfordshire's Lewis Hamilton won the Japanese Grand Prix, but the race was overshadowed when French driver Jules Bianchi crashed with a recovery vehicle. He's been taken to hospital with serious head injuries. Hamilton says his thoughts are with him. Devastating to hear. You know, we want to entertain, we want to put on a good show. We have so many fans here and, and obviously people watching, but um, and when you're in, leading the race and enjoying it, and then you hear one of your colleagues getting seriously injured, I mean, we, we never want that. And, um, yeah, so I... I I'm just going to say a big prayer for him. I hope he's OK. Chelsea are five points clear at the top of the Premier League after beating Arsenal 2-0 at Stamford Bridge. Manchester United beat Everton 2-1 to record a third victory in four games. United manager Louis van Gaal says it was a nervy ending to the game. Of course, always. And, uh, and uh, they, they get uh, uh, chances from outside the box and they shoot very good. Uh, but also in this uh, matter, De Gea was uh, fantastic. There was victory for the MK Dons and draws for both Wickham and Watford. Luton Town picked up another three points after a 2-1 win at Stevenage. Hatter's manager, John Still, gave credit to the borough. They worked hard, they battled hard, they responded to their support and, uh, you know, I, I think that they... You know, they've really, really give it, you know, give, give it every go, but today was our day. In tennis, Novak Djokovic has won the China Open title for the fifth time. Maria Sharapova won the women's title. And in snooker, Sean Murphy won the Bulgarian Open in Sofia. BBC Three Counties News and Sport, more at seven o'clock. If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Wait, type in. Swear word. Why? Something oh, it's going to. Yeah. <laughs> Why would I not? Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Look who's joined me in the office. It's me. Studio. For a little look at the papers, Catherine Boyle. Yeah, I'm having a little look at the papers now. Have a little look. What you got? Um, a man who... Um got into a giant inflatable bubble what? and started a 1,000 mile journey across the Bermuda Triangle. What on earth could go wrong? Bermuda Triangle It Where makes people disappear, disappear. Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle Don't, don't go, go too near. near Don't go too near Well he didn't hear that song no. which is an excellent tune by the Sabari Manilow It's a great quartet. song Razor Bellucci an Iranian immigrant who was attempting to run the notorious waters Oh it's this You know these balls you can see them sometimes at um, fairgrounds and that They put them on a paddling Pool, idiot balls. And you can run in them. Yeah, idiot balls. Well, unless you're a child, in which case, fair play, have a go. Yeah. This man thought he would run across the ocean. Nuts. It's not worked out. A few homemade pro- protein bars and bottled water. He planned to run the hamster ball in the morning, cool off in the sea in the afternoon and sleep in a hammock at night. It sounds like a plan. Describing himself as an excellent fisherman, he said he would be catching his sustenance while enduring temperatures of up to 120 Fahrenheit. He was also required to pump up the hydropod, oh. which he propelled by running... Pump it up! And pushing pump it up. for an hour a day. But on Wednesday, three days in, US Coast Guard was alerted to this strange bubble. Rescue boat arrived to find him disorientated and asking how to get to Bermuda. Was he on his own? Yes! Well, that's just nuts. You can't... That's just nuts. Right, there is, there is daring do and then there is madness, isn't there? There's what? Daring do, with a D-E-R-R-E-N. Thank you very much indeed. I-N-G. Can I ask you a personal question? Why? Do you, do you want to have some sex? When? Or some cake? Cake. You see, I thought so. One in six women prefer a slice of cake to a night of passion. Depends on the cake. It's I mean, awfully dry. Ugh. The cake? Yeah. Whether it's lemon drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote this? A Daily Mail reporter. I oh. love it when they, don't, they not, haven't got the balls to put their name to it. But it does mean he can go to town. Whether it's lemon drizzle or a tra- traditional Victoria sponge. Mm, creamy. Few of us would <laughs> deny enjoying the occasional slice of cake. But one in six women like it so much they would happily choose it over sex, a survey found. I would say cake is, is, is slightly less messy. <laughs> when asked what they would be willing to give up if it meant they would, could keep eating cake, 16% of women said making love. Who makes love these days? Well, you know, plenty of people. Compared with just Good 9% them. of men. I'm not that bothered about cake, really. I had a nice cake yesterday, lemon, did you? lemon curd. Mm, very sweet. Yeah, the boys chose it. What did you balance that out with? Coffee? 
Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was nice. Because you don't want sweet on top of that. No, 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 no. I prefer um, salty. I prefer, yeah, I prefer a packet crisps. <laughs> Or a rice cracker. I'm confused now. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not that bothered about cake, so, so uh, stick, stick that in your pipe, Daily Mail reporter. <laughs> Gerard Depardieu really is the biggest liar in the world, isn't he? <laughs> He's just a liar. Stop asking Gerard Depardieu questions. What was it he said last week? That he drinks um, something like 15 bottles of wine a day. A day, yeah. All right, yeah. Chinny wreck on. Well, th- <laughs> today's uh, um, uh, made-up story from Gerard Depardieu, <laughs> there's two of them. I was a grave robber and a rent boy. All right, Gerard. All right. A desperate child wanders the streets, earning money as a rent boy, stealing from clients and even taking jewellery from graves. It could be the plot from one of his films, but Gerard Depardieu has revu- revealed these are, in fact, details from his troubled past. This story is by the Mail Foreign Service. Have they not got real people working at the Daily Mail They've anymore? They've got someone sitting outside Gerard Depardieu's house and waiting for him to go to the off-licence, then firing questions at him. They got a photo of Jesus as well. No, they've not. Yeah, they have. Okay. Archaeologists in Spain claim to have found one of the earliest pictures of Jesus. Guess what, guys? He's clean shaven. But is that because in those days they didn't used to draw beards on? The image is unusual because traditionally Jesus is depicted with a beard. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Can I ask any question? Uh, Was Jesus black? Don't think so. He was certainly Middle Eastern, surely. He, he was certainly darker mm. than the um, the than um, uh, Robert Powell. Yes, wasn't he? I would say so. Arab looking, possibly. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. If you've seen Jesus, what did he look like? I don't know. I wasn't asking. I was asking the listener. All oh, right. Should we have a record? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Hang on a second. Have that one. Oh, I press that button, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, no. <clears throat> Here's something. We had the Do fella. you know what that song's about? Um, probably about drugs, if it's no, no, Fable Mac. No, it wasn't. Sarah was her best friend, oh. and she was having an affair oh. with... Mick Fleetwood. Mick Fleetwood. And then she found out Sarah, Sarah was as well, was. and they fell out, and then that's the make-up song. T- today's phone-in is, uh, I'd never seen that button before. We will expand it after half-past seven into any story about a button, but until then, I'm going to be specific. Uh, uh, also, another one we can do, and, and maybe Justin, Justin can do something on this, the luckiest people in pop and rock. Mick Fleetwood is the luckiest man in rock. He's an average drummer at best who's just managed to latch himself onto first of all Peter Green who was amazing then when he went um, loopy loops uh, uh, the Buckingham and Nicks he's the the luckiest people in rock please 08459 455 555 dare I say it dare I say it yes I will Davy Jones I mean with the greatest of respect to the Daydream Believer he was very he was very jammy but without him they wouldn't have had that kind of adorable oh yeah he was I mean, part he of the scientific formula yeah he was part of the reason why li- little girls like them yeah exactly he was a cute English one but yeah. still I mean still very lucky considering um, 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 boy oh boy the chops into- of the other three exactly 08459 455 555 uh, we should say Kelly Betts isn't here this week instead it's Alice Glossop. Oh, Alice. Alice. You're right, Alice. <laughs> yeah, and we just had uh, a travel update, which I can tell you all about. Oh, look, oh, she look. can't shake it off. Can't shake it off. Once, Go on. once a travel person, always a travel person, as the well known saying goes. It's very well known saying. In travel person circles. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mark called. Yep. Uh, the yep. accident on the northbound side of the M1 between junction 14 and 15 is clear. The... But on the southbound Bow. side, there's another accident. Oh, oh no. Nuts. What are you going to do about it, Alice? I'm going to tell someone else so they know for the travel bulletin. Good. You missed this last week, Alice. We had a story in the newspaper about... Oh, gosh, I nearly said something really rude then. I will, Gosh, that was... Um, what? I let my defences down then. I nearly said... There was a story in the paper last week about a gentleman who... With could, an affliction. With an affliction. He could not stop um, having orgasms. OK. There's a story today... Moaning Glory. Good morning. Oh, I can't believe you're doing this one. A man's... If you've got young ears, I'll, I'll turn the radio off now. I can, hang on, I can turn the radio off for you. I've got the switch here. That's hang on. A... Right, we're back on. Man's 17-hour erection ends in agony. Horrified Jason Garnett suffered agony as medics drained two pints of blood from his, quotes, willy... Oh, to end a 17-hour erection. Hotel worker Jason went to a and after waking with a... I, I, won't, I don't... Yeah, think, well, we know. ..that refused to go. <laughs> Jason, Jason, 23, said, Seeing them stab my penis with a needle was a horrible experience, like something out of a horror film. The pain was 10 out of 10. What kind of horror films is he watching? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the John Wayne Bobbitt story. But the erection refused to subside even after blood was taken. He had to have a further 24 injections of medication before it died down. Crikey. 24 injections? He went to... This is how he tried to deal with it himself at home. Right? Oh, no. Not the technique I'd use. <laughs> he went to A&E after an ice bath and a jog around the block! <laughs> <laughs> he had a jog around the block! Now, after two days in hospital recovering, everything is working as it should be downstairs. <laughs> We Jason, don't need to know this. Jason Wright, and there's a picture of him. How did they test oh, that? Oh, I don't want a face to put to it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got a picture of him with his hands going, ooh. <laughs> Jason said, it's completely normal now, apart from the fact that it... <laughs> All right, no. <laughs> no, I can do this, then we'll go to travel. I'll do this and we'll say nothing, OK? Jason Wright said, It's completely normal now, apart from the fact that it looks like it's been through a war. It's all a bit black and blue. Oh. <laughs> Deary me. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off with the problems on the M1 heading northbound. It's closed at the moment between Junction 14 for Milton Keynes and Junction 15 for Northampton following an accident that happened a little earlier on this morning. Uh, there is a diversion in place following the hollow diamond symbol. The M1 southbound also looking quite heavy on camera between Junction 15A for Toaster and Junction 14 for Milton Keynes. The M25 heading anti-clockwise, that's building up on the sensors at the moment between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 
20 for Kings Langley. Also starting to build now in Brickett Wood on the North Orbital Road, just at Junction 21A for the M25. On the A414 in Park Street, building a little around the Park Street roundabouts. But so far on the trains, everything's looking good. No problems or delays. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Nicola. We're just trying to work out which Not one. Me. I think it's me. Oh yeah, I'm smelling dear. a bit fresh. Oh, dear. You changed that shirt. I, I have. This is a clean shirt on, but I, I have run out of deodorant. Oh. Ah. 6.46. It's uh, Monday the 6th. A lot of sixes there. Of October, I mean, Lee, these are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman from Buckinghamshire who's been given the right to have her late husband's baby says the Tories are wrong to scrap the Human Rights Act. The body of a woman who sent abusive messages to the parents of Madeleine McCann has been found at a hotel in Leicester. And the emergency services are dealing with an accident between a lorry and car which has closed the M1 northbound between uh, near Newport Pagnell although we think that may have cleared now and it might be the southbound side that's got the problem. Let's get the weather. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. I had my first ever pork pie yesterday. Right, Dealey, you can stop that. Dealey, I know you're upstairs, so can you stop doing that, please, Justin, and can you uh, get the weather onto a fader, please? He's a, he's a little so-and-so, isn't he? I tell you what, it's going to be cold today. That's pretty much it, isn't it? I think so. It's autumn. What do you expect? We're on an island. Also, don't make fun of the, my first pork pie. That was given to me by um, Mike Reed, no less. Really? The, uh, the Radio 1 disc jockey, yeah. Had it been on the floor? Quite possibly, yes. <laughs> Get ready. This is going to be an incredible collaboration. The lead singer of one of the biggest bands of this decade. On stage with one of the UK's most promising breakthrough artists. And an absolute legend of British rock. It's going to be very special. An unmissable BBC Music performance. 27 artists, one song. Tomorrow night from 8 across the BBC.
I like Kirsty McCall. Yeah, I miss Kirsty McCall. She was, I was never a huge fan, but she was just nice. To have around. Yeah, nice to have around. Wouldn't it be nice if she was a, she was around and John Lennon was around? It'd be nice. John Lennon would be stirring it up. He wouldn't. He'd be... No, he would No, he he'd wouldn't. He'd be a gobby little so-and-so. No, I don't think he would. Oh, no, I, I think, think... he was mellowing out. No, I, I think he would have been a gobby, gobby little socialist and it would have been wonderful for it. He'd have done a Christmas album yeah. by now. Yeah. American Songbook. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he would have done. Of course he would. John Lennon sings the American Songbook. Permission to speak freely. Always. Rubbish singer? Who? John Lennon. Um, no, not a rubbish singer. Um, a distinctive singer. Rubbish? No. I liked his nasal tones. All of his, um, all of his 70s albums, I like his 70s albums, uh, but he's a rubbish singer on those. No, but he was the gritty to the sweet Paul McCartney. I think you needed the blend of the two. Oh, I'm not, I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking John Lennon. Yeah, I am are. a little You're bit, totally knocking but it. he was a rubbish singer. No, I want... Discreet... <laughs> You're wrong. Uh, all right, let me find. Hang on, let me find. Let me find a rubbish John Lennon. Oh well, you know, if you find a rubbish one, it's going to sound rubbish. Sometimes Paul McCartney sounds rubbish. No, Paul McCartney never sounds rubbish. Yeah, sometimes he does. Never sounds rubbish. Yeah, around the sixth repeat of la 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 la. la, la, la. Hang on a minute. Let, 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 hang on a second. They both sound rubbish here. Have some of this. Oh, you can't play it. I can play it. Come on. There we go. It. No, you no, don't. it's kind of Everly's. Um, well, okay, all right. He sounds rubbish. Mm. Yeah, try this one. What's, what's this on. one? There we go. Let's find that. I don't know. What on earth? Oh. Here we go. Here we go. That's George. Nice. There's a a woman in the uh, newspaper. Um, She is stood in America, New York, Times Square. Still. She is naked. Wow. And a man is painting the uh, American flag on her. Okay. It was starkers and stripes as these painted girls showed some front in New York's Times Square. Show me. Yep. Wearing just knickers and the American flag daubed over their chests, the saucy patriots raised cash by letting tourists photograph them. They even attracted attention from a city cop, but fortunately, it wasn't a bust. <laughs> yeah. They used to have the naked cowboy um, in New York, didn't they? Is he still there? I think he's still there, the naked Do you know cowboy. what the best one is that no one ever talks about? Yeah. The Bushman of San Francisco. Hey, who's that? My sister used to live there and he did me... <laughs> The Bushman, did you? <laughs> and her, and everyone else. I don't know what that means. There was a man, a homeless man, yeah. who would find foliage, cover himself in it, and yeah. crouch at various points of San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Jump out. Yeah. Scare you. Was he naked? And then demand money. No, he wasn't. Beardy. Beardy. Elvis Presley once used the second strongest swear word against me. Elvis Presley? Elvis Presley? Yeah, yeah. Elvis Presley? <laughs> yeah. But he died... Oh, yeah, you are quite old. No, Justin, mm. Elvis Presley used the second strongest word against me. How? I'm confused. Well, uh, we drove past him and he um, said something He said uh, something about my mum. Oh, that's fantastic. Isn't it? Great, great yeah. story for the pub. This was about five years ago. Oh, <laughs> come on. Where were you? Las Vegas. Right, yeah. He's quite I'd, sweary in Vegas, isn't he? he, he honestly, it, I, don't, I don't know. It probably wasn't the real one because I think he died, didn't he? Yeah. It was, but there was a, a fat fella in an Elvis suit who probably. said something very rude about my mother to me. Well, that's uncalled for, isn't it? That was unnecessary. Hey, boss, you know I deal in fact, not fiction. I do know that. Would Justin. you like a great fact? Yeah, I would actually. Yeah, go one on. One in three people in America, they are Elvis Presley impersonators. One in three, and in Scotland, one in two people, they're ginger. Facts from around the world. Does. Gosh. Does International it. fact finder. We need to get you a jingle for that. Mm. Maybe you could phone up Peter Andre. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. So, uh, busy we, weekend. Th- this morning, Just, yeah. we sent you to find out... I'd never seen that button before. Mm. Let's hear the audio. Uh, that's coming up after 8 o'clock this morning. What? Oh. It's, it's a bit of a tough one, this. Oh. So, so what have you got? Apart from somebody's belly button. No, well, I found the button mm. that switches off the radio station. Yep, still confused about that, but uh, there you well, go. Why was the confusion? Show well, I just don't understand how there is a button which can... 
I'm sense totally fascinated by this. I've worked at this radio yeah. station since 1982. I've never, never seen come that button this. before. And I don't know how you haven't seen it, because it's bright red. It's bright red! Wow. So I'll be taking that to the streets. You'll hear the audio after 8 o'clock. I'll uh, be live in Winter Street Park in Luton at about 7.20. you got your mates down there with you, just to keep mm, it, make sure you're OK? Possibly. Yeah. And um, I thought we could maybe take something to the streets about that man you were talking about. Which one? Who had the blood drain. No. No. <laughs> Justin, thank you very much indeed. Probably best not to um, hand him that baton. Well, that's an well, unfortunate uh... choice of phrase. <laughs> now, what there, the, 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 there is a big story, isn't there, in the papers? There is. There is. It's at the moment. I thought we were going to go to it gradually and gently, we've but two, actually we haven't got, got time, minutes. so yeah. here we go. OK. Yeah. 63-year-old woman. It's the second story in the news headlines, if you've been listening to the news. And why wouldn't you, frankly? He, uh, Lee Agnew is a genius at reading bulletins. He's very, very good, that guy. 63-year-old woman who was part of an online hate campaign against Madeleine McCann's parents has been found dead in a Leicestershire hotel room days after being doorstepped by um, a international news outlet. Yeah. Made me feel very, very uncomfortable, that whole story. I saw the tweets about um, that doorstep and, you know, leading you to watch what was about, uh, what, 20 seconds of video of someone saying nothing very much. Can we, uh, how do we, do, we have to d- d- tread carefully around this because I don't believe that any correlation between her being doorstepped by Sky and it being broadcast on all outlets uh, and her suicide, I don't believe there's any connection, but w- th- no connection has been established yet. Mm-hmm. We can all make up our own stories and our own theories, but uh, no connection has been established yet. Um, what, what, uh, is, well, is it fair to put that much attention on Twitter trolls? There's been a lot of it recently, and actually they're just punters, aren't they? They're just people in the street. Maybe they've done something daft <sighs> online, who knows? But, yeah, but... But, but they've, been, they've been flagged up in the past, haven't they, Twitter trolls? <laughs> but, but to, uh, listen, I've had Twitter trolls saying they want to kill and rape my children. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, and it's, it's upsetting, however tough you are. People say the show's rubbish. Uh, well, most days I can take that. Uh, uh, sometimes it hurts, but most days it's fine. But when they say things like that, you, you've got to be really tough to be able to, to bat that one back. Mm. Uh, and for the McCanns, you know, obviously it's, it's, it's a whole mess, but for, for that kind of abuse to be online about them when their daughter is missing, um, whatever your theory is behind what happened, uh, there's got to be some point that we say we can't accept that anymore. OK, can we, can we, let me run this question past you. Were Sky right to um, expose that woman uh, on, on the news? Mm-hmm. Were they right to do that? 08459 four double five five double five. Your thoughts, please. Uh, a, a more sensitive way around it would have been perhaps to have pixelated her or, or have given her the right to reply. But then again... they didn't name her, but they put her face there. I mean, it was quite obvious but, who it was if you knew her. Yeah, but then again... You know, weren't, weren't we all slightly, and I say this to be honest, when that story broke and I heard the audio on the radio, weren't we all slightly rubbing our hands with glee that one of these uh, people who was sending this nonsense had been busted? Wasn't there an element of, aha, gotcha? And no one could have predicted this turn of events. No one could have predicted it. Worst guy right to doorstep. That's the phrase that uh, woman. 08459 four double five five double five. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off on the M1 heading northbound, it has now been reopened and traffic seems to be easing off a bit between Junction 14 for Milton Keynes and Junction 15 for Northampton. Taking a look at the A5 in Milton Keynes, that's looking very heavy on the speed sensors at the moment, heading northbound between Monks Way and Old Stratford as people are trying to avoid the M1. The A414 in Park Street, a little bit busy. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much, Nicola. So were Sky right to broadcast that woman? Not just Sky, all the other outlets. Were they right to broadcast her? Give us a call and we'll speak after the news with Lee. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Seven o'clock, I'm Lee Agnew. The headlines concern about plans to scrap the Human Rights Act. Madeleine McCann, internet troll found dead in hotel. And the Thameslink boss says his trains will be more comfortable to stand up in. BBC Three Counties Radio. Scrapping the Human Rights Act would be a massive mistake, according to a woman from Buckinghamshire who's been granted the chance to have her late husband's baby. Beth Warren's been speaking in response to the Conservatives' pledge to remove the act from UK law if they win the next election. 
section. She says it's changed her life. It's given me the time not to have to force into getting pregnant. Without it, there's a massive chance I would be with a child now. I couldn't have finished my university course, probably be claiming benefits. Really, I, that wasn't the life that I wanted, whereas now I've become a physiotherapist and I can look forward to the future. A woman accused of an online hate campaign against Madeleine McCann's parents has been found dead at a hotel. 63-year-old Brenda Leyland sent them abusive messages on Twitter. Helena Lee reports. Last week, Brenda Leyland was confronted by a Sky News reporter outside her home in Leicestershire who put the allegation to her on camera. The footage of it was aired on Thursday. Leicestershire police won't name her as they say that's a matter for the coroner, but they confirmed officers were called when the body of a woman was found in a hotel room in Leicester. They say they aren't treating her death as suspicious. The man in charge of the new Thameslink franchise has infuriated the unions with comments about his overcrowded trains. The chief executive of Govia Thameslink, Charles Horton, says his trains will be more comfortable to stand up in. Jane Killick reports. One of the biggest complaints from commuters on the Bedford to Brighton line is the lack of seats, with passengers often forced to stand for their entire journey. Mr Horton says although he can't promise that people won't stand on trains into central London, he can promise that because of new standing areas, they'll be more comfortable. The RMT union says with Thameslink users being charged some of the highest fares in the country, it's a shocking statement from the boss of a brand new franchise. An alcohol-free zone could be introduced at a park in Luton to stop people drinking there. Parents say they're avoiding the play area in Windsor Street because it's overrun with drunks. But the drinkers say they're not the ones causing the problems. You do get a lot of Polish and stuff in there and throwing stuff everywhere and all that before they go to work in the mornings. But us ourselves, we walk to the bins, you know what I mean? We haven't got a drink problem. We sit in flats every day. We're lonely watching Jeremy Kyle. In sports, the Formula One driver Jules Bianchi has been undergoing emergency surgery for a severe head injury after he crashed during the Japanese Grand Prix. The incident brought an early end to the race, which was won by Hertfordshire's Lewis Hamilton. The weather will be wet and windy for most of the day. Top temperatures around 14 degrees Celsius. That's 57 degrees Fahrenheit. You can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Hey, that Helen Lee was good, wasn't she? Amazing. BBC Very good. Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. I never really thought about leaving. Bought my houses here and that's it. Telling everyone about where you live. I've never found anywhere that has just so much to offer. All this week, we're exploring Stevenage. The parks and the gardens are fantastic. It's very clean, it's very friendly. I've lived here all my life, so I've got a lot of friends and family here. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. Morning! She was good. It was good. We should get her on more. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, there's a lot to talk about this morning. Do you think we have too many human rights? What am I looking at? What am I looking at? Catherine, just hand me a mirror. What? I've not got anything on me. What are you doing? You've got black fingerprints all over your forehead. No, I haven't. Haven't you? Or is that just where your dents are? I think that's just where my dents Show are. Show me. There, do you mean there? No, I'm all along here. What are you talking about, woman? Oh, nah. Maybe not. Nah, mate, nah. I was through pressing that button. Nah, mate, but back to the mirror here. That'll come in handy. <laughs> so, have we got too many human rights? Sky and other news outlets write to out the McCann's Twitter troll. She's been found... Well, she looks like she's killed herself. We don't know if there's any connection between the two events yet, but, but, but... Were they right to expose her? What was... Oh, I'd never seen that button before. I found the button that turns the radio station off. Yes. It's exciting. We're all slightly worried. I'm waiting for um, the head of technical, the head of the de- technical department, Professor Travers, to come in and uh, give me a right royal rollicking for, for, doing... for breaking the radio station. Mm-hmm. It'll take six weeks for him to do that, but never mind. What? What? Oh eight four five. You go quiet, don't you, Boyle? Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts and bucks. Guys, this is BBC Three Counties Radio. 
guys. Listen, he's the only one who knows how to fix stuff. I'm not crossing him. It, have you ever been in his office? Yes. In, in his laboratory? There's loads of bits there. I have it's, no idea what they are. It's, it's, every, it's every man's dream to have an office like that. There's soldering irons, there's wires, there's plugs, there's batteries, there's like little meters, there's all kinds of stuff. It's like the man drawer yeah. exploded. Oh, man. If only I were allowed to uh, to You've have... got a man drawer? Uh, I've got a, a man cave. A man cave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you? Yeah, well, I've got like the, the, what we call the office. It's the room with the computer and my CDs in. Right. It's the office. OK. But where do you keep your string? Like, uh, Not allowed to have string in the house. Tape, Not allowed you? to have that tape in the house, no. Oh. Just tied it up and thrown away. Can I have that person that does that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. Because there's no one that throws stuff away in my house. It should no be one. you. should be you. I know, but I like things. You never know when you're going to need them. Back to that fella with the 17 now. 08459 four double five five double five is the uh, telephone number if you want to give us a call. It really is uh, um, the show that everybody is talking about. I say everybody, I mean um, me. Now, the Conservatives will be making a huge mistake by scrapping the Human Rights Act at the next election. That's according to a Newport Pagnell woman who used the legislation to win the right to bear her late husband's child. Last time we spoke to Beth Warren, she wasn't sure when or even whether she might start the process. Well, Beth uh, joins me on the line now. Morning, Beth. Good morning. Explain exactly how the human rights laws worked in your favour. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for making me laugh this morning. It started my day off really well. Have we made you laugh? We'll stop you that. Yeah, we'll I've have... got a bit of a chest infection, so I'm a little bit croaky with it. We'll have no more of that. Me up, well, so good. Thank you, you much. You're very kind. No, of course, well, the Human Rights Act for me gave... I really feel it gave me back my life. Two years of fighting my legal battle, it was what won my legal battle to give me that chance to have my late husband's children, should I wish in the future. So how did it work? Were you initially, initially kind of, basically, you, your, your husband passed away yes. uh, and you wanted the right to keep his semen so that you could have a child if you so choose to? That's right. So he'd spent seven years signing documentation to say that if he died, I could use his sperm to be able to become pregnant. And it was then a month to the day that he died, which I was told that I had six weeks to do that. At the time that I had lost my brother two months before that and then losing my husband needing to return to work needing to return to my university course i said i wasn't ready to have a child and i needed more time and of course that is what my husband would have wanted but hfea legislation said that i had just six weeks to become pregnant gosh that's that's a lot of pressure isn't it particularly when you know you've had you've been through so many tragedies so the human rights act how how did you, how did it work how did you, you i'm assuming your solicitor kind of got involved how did it work for you yes so james my wonderful solicitor um in conjunction with my legal team um applied several different arguments in high court this was the end of january this year one of them being what actually won the case was the human rights act in particular article 8 which is about the privacy of family life. So basically it just allowed the wishes of my late husband to be respected so that I could have the children should I wish in the future, which is the best thing for for me and certainly the best thing for a child. And it's what, what you know, to put it bluntly, what a dead man wanted. It was respecting his wishes and allowing me to have the best life that I could. The Tories want to scrap it if they um, get into power next year. Yes, and of course... They've said they're going to be replacing it, but we don't yet know what they're replacing it with. And it does really worry me, especially the privacy of family life, because I do think that possibly sometimes it is used in the wrong way, and that's why people are unhappy about it. However, we've just got to rely on law and the strength of law to interpret it in the right way. And that's exactly what Mrs Justice Hogg was able to do without that law, without that legislation, rather. I don't think I could have won my case, in which case... Would I have been, well, I had a child by now. Could I finish my university course? That's not the kind of future that I wanted to give my child. You know, someone that's still very emotional, that was tired of fighting a legal battle, and that's not ready to have a family yet. There will be, I'm sure we'll get some calls throughout the morning from, from some people who say, yeah, well, yours, Beth, with the greater respect, it, it, it's kind of a very rare situation. Mm. There, are, there are bigger battles that we can't win because of this law. Of course, but then it comes down to how law interprets this act. And taking it away, even though there's rare cases like mine, it's really changed my life for the better and allowed something that was really quite common sense to actually prevail. Mm. 
Do you know what you're going to do yet, Beth? I don't know. I think it's, people think it's six months down the line, but yeah. for me, I'd lost my brother. I yeah. then two months later lost my husband. Within a month, I was fighting this legal battle. It took so much out of me for two years. I was, I was crying over a legal battle instead of crying over my husband and my brother. So right now, I've... I've got two physiotherapy jobs, which is what I've been working towards, and Brilliant. I still teach my exercise classes, so it's probably not great for my throat. Um, but just pushing forward in life, having a social life, and and being that young person now, you know, still in my twenties, that I can just enjoy life, embrace what happens, and just move forward. Beth, I hope you don't think me insensitive. Can I go off on a very slight tangent? Of course. You can. mentioned that you t- you teach fitness classes. Yeah. Right. I need a little bit of inside information. I'm uh, getting a little bit tubby, and I'm really unfit. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've got two young boys, and I can't keep up with them. I'm I'm sort of thinking of maybe getting a personal trainer. That's also what I do. I'm a personal trainer. Oh, as well. he- hello, Beth Warren. We're just, in, we're just in the wrong place, isn't it? We're not close enough. No, I know. Uh, but uh, is it? <sighs> I'm worried it's a waste of money because it's quite expensive one-on-one personal trainer, isn't it? It is, yes. I think it's personal training. It's all about the personal trainer fitting into you and what you need. So with weight loss, it's the majority. I'd say 80% is diet, 20% is exercise. But a lot about the personal trainer is motivating you not only to come to that session once a week, but to make lifestyle changes of educating you on what to eat how to sleep, managing stress levels. Yeah, we go. And, of course, the exercise. But it's really, it's finding the right personal trainer. That's the Beth, thing. Beth, I'm no personal trainer, but I know that this is a man who has a fry-up five days <laughs> a week. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Potentially, we see the crooks of the problem, Beth. But yeah, quite potentially. It's, it's mainly diet. If you were my personal trainer, how many days a week would I be allowed to have a fry-up with a fried slice? It's all moderation as well, of course. If, Three? if you had that for breakfast and then had healthy food the rest of the day, I'd, I'd let you have that as that one treat. What? Probably most people two times a week, something like that. Oh, oh see, that's, that's, that's not bad. That's, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm realistic. You know, we're, we're all human beings, so you've got to enjoy your life as well. But. Beth, listen, you are a good sport. I really appreciate your time this morning. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you very much in. indeed. Thank you. That's, uh, that's Beth Warren, and um, I'm, I'm glad she indulged me going off on a slight... Uh, she actually said you should have two fry up she, a, a personal trainer <laughs> has said to me, I have to have two fry-ups a week with fried slices. When she says have healthy food for the rest <laughs> yeah. of the day, that, means that donuts, doesn't mean yeah. fruit Haribos. Beth, thank you very much. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. I'm considering it. I am considering it. I thought about it. It's a shame she's so far away, isn't it? Because I, 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 I get on with Beth. We've had her on a few times and I would... Uh, she sounds like the sort that could, that could, could push me, but allow me to have fry-ups. I'm thinking about it because I am getting a little bit tubs. Oh show me. No, don't show me. Okay. I don't want to see it unsheathed, but just stand... Don't. Oh, wow. There it is. Listen to that, guys. Hang but you this. are, like, nearly 50, so that... Oh, happens. stick stick that. Listen to this, guys. Oh, wow. Those jeans really are low, aren't they? Yeah? <laughs> that was the sound of five fry-ups a week. I, I'm, I'm Jimmy Five Fry-ups now. Uh, but I'm You're think- doing that thing where you're wearing your jeans underneath it as well. <laughs> Thanks for showing me that. And I used to be so slim. And I could lose this really... I could lose this in a couple of weeks just by not eating bread or pasta for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. But I love bread and pasta, man. Just don't do it after a certain time at night. Uh, if you've got... Your story's a personal trainer's, please. I, I, I think I need, I, need, I need someone to shout at me once a week. Or your fitness regime. <laughs> Everyone's got their own. What are your yeah. fitness rules? Your homemade fitness rules, please. Let's have some of those. 08459 four double five five double five. I had a friend, a weird friend, that I'm not friends with anymore, who would never eat chocolate because she thought that was the key. It's not just chocolate. It's the amount of chocolate, isn't it? For me, it's, it really is bread. bread when I stop oh, eating bread, bread I, love a, see, I love a sandwich. I love a sandwich. Have that in the afternoon. Don't have it in the evening. Well, my life is so screwy. With, with the, by the time I get home from work yeah. and then I put the kids to bed at, at half seven and then I've got like a, a half hour window to eat. And I, I, I. You know what you're doing? You're doing that thing. And, and we've been doing it recently at home as well because people have been ill in varying degrees. But it's, They've all had the trots, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. But, so, it so, no one's, so no one's been to the shop. No one can gear themselves towards shopping online. So we're doing the sort of back of the cupboard thing. So you go look, open the cupboard, right? Oh, I'll have that. Pasta's always easy, isn't it? Yeah. Pasta with tomato sauce. It's the make-do food, student food. Are roast, dinner, roast dinners are okay, yeah? 
once a week. I had a roast dinner last night. That's 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 last week. So I can have another one tonight if I need to. Leftovers, because that's it's a new week. Is that the rule? Sure, why not? <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 heading northbound. It has reopened, but still a little bit slow at the moment, between Junction 14 for Milton Keynes and Junction 15 for Northampton, following an accident that happened a little earlier this morning. It's queuing at the moment for about a mile on the A5, heading northbound just at the A508. And taking a look at the M25 heading anti-clockwise, that's queuing on the speed sensors this morning between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 20 for Kings Langley. Also heavy anti-clockwise between Junction 17 at Maple Cross and Junction 15 for the M4. In Bora but it's queuing already on the cameras um, on the Barnet Bypass between Stirling Corner and Mill Hill Circus. So far, there's no problems or delays to the trains. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Nicola, thank you very much. 7.16, it's Monday the 6th of October. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman from Buckinghamshire who's been given the right to have her late husband's baby says the Conservatives will be wrong to scrap the Human Rights Act. The body of a woman who sent abusive messages to the parents of Madeleine McCann has been found at a hotel in Leicester. And the man in charge of the Thameslink line says his trains are being made more comfortable to stand up in. Thanks, guys. BBC Three Counties Radio. Give me a seat! Just give me a seat, please. Tomorrow night, the Football League Trophy takes centre stage in three counties sport. We'll bring you two games from the second round, including Luton versus Crawley. We're just less than 90 seconds in. Hatters lead by a goal to nil. And the grudge match between MK Dons and AFC Wimbledon. It's game over in this one. It's MK Dons 3, AFC nil. The Johnstons paint trophy live in three counties sports tomorrow night from 7 here on BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. (laughs) BBC Three Counties Radio. (laughs) What? Oh, you made me laugh. Venison. You had venison last night. Right? That's that's that deer. I'm proper posh or medieval. Sorry. Turns out I'm proper posh or medieval. That's deer, isn't it? Yeah. No, it wasn't. It was about three pound. uh, Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. It was. Uh, it was on uh, three for tenner. Three steaks for a tenner. Oh. oh my goodness! It, it was soft. It was delicious. It was yeah. flavoursome. It was gone in about two minutes. I tell you what, I like to have with it. Hiya, Justin, I've got Do you know what I like? I like mushy peas. Oh, I'd love to have. I've never had venison. I'd love a bit of venison. I would love a little bit of that. It would be nice. Just cook it like beef. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Try it. Try it. Justin, you're fit. Well, kind of. No, you the way, oh, the way you walked in this morning. Well, uh, listen, I've, I've got a bone to pick with you. You got what? You come in this morning, yes, sir. and you're saying, oh, do you know what? Yes, sir. I'm not fit anymore. Yes, sir. I offered you a fitness class about a month ago. I'm not going to Daz Fit's intensive army training. We were going to go hard, and then you said no. I went and home. Now, now you come in this morning moaning, oh, I'm really unfit. Yeah, I'm not going to go. I don't want to go to that because it's nuts. I want, I want a woman <laughs> or a man oh, yeah, to yeah, shout yeah. at me for an hour a week mm. while I sit there eating pizza. Stop eating that pizza! <laughs> that's me, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm tempted. But you, you're fit, Just. You're svelte. <sighs> kind of. Kind of. Apart from the growlers. Well, it's, it's the growlers, isn't it, that keeps the weight down? I'm not as fit as I used to be. And I hate to kind of, you know, to, to, to on your fire, but... When I've been going to the gym recently, off the back of it, I've not been feeling very well. I've had pains down my side. So yeah, I'm just saying, if you want to get fit, oh. what it might be painful. To, what you're referring to there is what's known as a stitch. You, you talk about um, pains down your side. I've got pains up my backside. Have you? Oh, I, no. Listen, they don't need to hear this. <laughs> no, really? In fact, we've been regaled with this, okay. dear listener. Just put it this way. Go and get someone to have a look at it. I, I, I will. I'm not embarrassed to have someone go and have a look at it just. Mm, mm. So, you know, you know the. Um, I no. think I've got that again. Yeah. Oh. It happened to me the other week. Yes. I was down at doctors myself. Can I... Those rubber gloves. Oh, I've still got nightmares. Can I ask, right? You right, Kath? Yeah. Quite erotic this morning, isn't it? <laughs> um, Can I ask, is this true, right? Mm. I just thought of this last week. I've not heard the word stitch for ages, and I thought about stitches last week. You know when, you get the, when you're running, you get a stitch in your side? Mm. Is, this is what I was always told it was when I was a kid. Is it your liver sticking to your ribs? <laughs> it feels like that, doesn't it? Is that what it is? No. I've got no idea. 
you need a medical expert. It's a build-up of lactic acid, is it not? Which causes your liver to stick to your ribs. Yeah. What is a stitch? Oh, eight, four, I'm getting one now. Oh, eight, four, five, nine, four, double, five, five, double, five. And why does it make a difference if you crunch over on it? it stops hurting them, Walk through it? it, is what they say. No, thanks, I'll have a little sit-down. Yeah. Cup of tea. Anyway, Justin, that's, uh, that's enough chitty chat. On to something slightly more serious. Mm. Uh, we've got a busy morning as well ahead of you, so, so yeah. focus. Uh, Thursday, last Thursday, we told you how parents are avoiding a play area in Windsor Street in Luton because it's where the local street drinkers are hanging out. Well, here's what one parent had to say. How much of a problem is drinking in this park? Then? Oh, I live here nearly three, four years, and every day I see this problem here. Not, not very nice for children and mothers when they come here to play with babies. How many people are usually here drinking? 50, 20 people. And that's every day? Yes. How does it make you feel? Oh, horrible. Sometimes I don't want to pass here because there are smell drinking and, and drugs and everything. Well, after initially telling us there were no laws preventing people from drinking in parks, the Borough Council are now considering a ban. Justin, you're there again, are you, in Windsor Street this morning? Absolutely. I mean, I, mean, I spoke to you last Thursday at about uh, 20 past seven in the morning, yep. and there were eight people already drinking inside that children's play area. This morning, thankfully, there's nobody drinking. But then again, I'm sure people waking up this morning, going outside will agree, it's a pretty miserable morning, and it's raining. Um, so Certainly no drinkers there today, but I went back to the park on Friday at about 12.30pm and I spoke to a couple of people who were drinking in the children's play area and I asked them why they thought it was acceptable for them to be consuming alcohol in the play area. Uh, basically at the end of the day we live in flats that haven't got gardens and stuff like that and it's a nice sunny morning. And it's easier to socialise. We sit here, we don't bother nobody, we tidy up after ourselves. You do get a lot of Polish and stuff in here and throwing stuff everywhere and all that before they go to work in the mornings. But us ourselves, we walk to the bins, you know what I mean? Yeah, basically, you haven't got a back garden and it's somewhere to sit and socialise with a bit of fresh air in that for an hour or so. I mean, you talk about the rubbish behind you, that there's all sorts of rubbish here, all sorts of cans. Is that not from you then? No. No, that's not from us. Do you not feel guilty that you're preventing families from using the children's play area? Not really, because most of the people that come and use this play area know us and speak to us and are respectful for us. We don't cause any trouble sitting here. But families are saying to us that they're not using this area anymore because it's surrounded by people drinking. You know what, mate, yeah? You've come in now, you're sticking a microphone in my face and you're interrogating me, yeah? I don't really want to talk about it anymore, to be honest with you, yeah? So, like... At the end of the day, I know that me and my friends, mm. we don't intimidate anybody. And if children are here, if anything, we're respectful to people telling them not to swear and things like that, yeah? So maybe the, f- the people you've got who's complaining about things are talking about another crowd and not us. Mm. Do you know what I mean? No, that's fair enough. Can I ask you a really, really personal question? Do, do you think that, that you have got a drink problem or is this just you socialising here? I have me. OK, can, can I ask you the question? Can I ask you that question, sir. We haven't got a drink problem. We sit in flats every day. We're lonely watching Jeremy Kyle. Makes you sick. We come out and meet our friends. We don't harm nobody. We we enjoy everybody, every kid that's in there. We We know the mothers and fathers. We don't cause no trouble to nobody. Gosh, uh, I can see both sides of the argument here. Mm, absolutely. Um, and, and those gentlemen don't think they have a drink problem, or they're well within their rights to uh, to think that. Who knows? Possibly they don't. But I can also... It, it, it is slight, And if they have got a drink problem, then, gosh, I hope they find help. But I, I can completely understand why uh, parents, why anybody, would it be intimidated to go into a play area when there are drunk people there? And it's a little bit... Mm. No, it's exceedingly selfish of that gentleman not to recognise that. Yeah, and it, it was, let's just say, um, how can I put this? It, it was interesting, a conversation we had, and I think on Thursday morning I was shocked by it because, you know, if you've got a couple of people, that's bad enough, but, but eight people drinking inside the children's play area at 20 so this is let me just get this right because this is so this is like what, what they're sitting on the swings or something yes absolutely well then that is intimidating of course it is and, and kids shouldn't have to be exposed to that at 20 past seven in the morning you've got parents who are walking their children through that park on the way to school and eight people drinking on the swings 
That, for while me, is I have shocking. every sympathy for the alcoholic or the, the, the drinker that finds himself in that situation, uh, they, they, they need to recognise that that's not fair on kids and parents alike. I think so. Uh, Luton Borough Council uh, initially told us there was nothing they could do. That, you found that a little frustrating last week, Just. They've changed mm. their minds slightly. Yeah, they've now sat down and actually thought about this off the back of the audio we sent them. So one of the possible actions could involve setting up an alcohol-free zone, which would prevent people drinking in the play area in Windsor Street. Uh, a similar scheme already operates in some parts of the town centre in Luton, and that's not all as well. There's a now talk of actually getting help for some of those people that we have spoken to in the park. Um, they told us, though, of course, that they live in flats, uh, they have no back gardens, so they go to the park to socialise with their friends and, and have a drink. But at Bedfordshire Police, uh, they've also said that they've increased patrols in the South Ward area of Luton, which is where the play area is. We did want to talk to somebody this morning from the council because it sounds to us, Ian, like that progress is being made, but sadly no one was available. As for Beds Police, again, a bit like the council, they weren't in a position to comment to us live on the show today. OK, well, we'll see how that goes. Justin, I, I've got two missions for you, and they're mm. both... I mean, they, they really are the extremes of, of the, uh, the palette, if you were. The first one is... Uh, I'd never seen that button before. Yeah. J- just any stories about buttons. <laughs> I found a button here at the studio. There was a buzz, OK? And I was trying to locate the buzz. Yeah. It's the thing called the racks. We've got really nice racks here at BBC Three Counties Radio. Mm. Killer racks. You're right, Catherine. Thank you. Um, and uh, I, I, I turned this switch off to try and stop the buzz. It took the station off air. It was wonderful. Well, I actually spoke to a pilot this morning. I said, have you ever pushed a button oh. and uh, you didn't realise it was there? And he said, no comment. Oh, flipping it. He's flying aeroplanes. <laughs> well, to, so we could get something on that on 08459 455 555. Uh, now, on a slightly more serious note, uh, the, uh, the, the woman who was accused of trolling, of being one of the trolls sending abuse... Uh, uh, to the McCanns on, online uh, has been found dead. Now, just we have to clarify that we, we don't know yet if there is a direct connection between being outed on Sky and other media outlets and her suicide. We don't know. I mean, we're making up our own stories here. Uh, something along the lines of, were Sky and the other news outlets right to out this woman? I may sound incredibly harsh off the back of what we know, but um, I would say absolutely yes. They were well within their rights. Everybody, I'm sure this morning, waking up hearing this news, wouldn't have expected this. Um, this is a major shock, but if anybody is going to go online and make comments about somebody, of course, whether it be somebody who lives down the road or whether it be the media they expect to be confronted, surely, because a lot of people nowadays, that they hide behind computer keyboards. They think they can go out and they can write whatever they want about whoever they want. And unfortunately, if you're going to do that, at some point, you've got to bear in mind that there could be confrontation. Here's the thing. OK, here's the thing that maybe puts a slightly different twist on it, OK? Mm. She didn't send abuse to the McCanns. She stated her opinion... The McCanns are not on Twitter. Does that make a difference? She did, wasn't sending it directly to the McCanns. Yeah. I think it, it probably does. I think if you are writing direct messages to somebody, whether you've set up a, a Twitter account in somebody else's name, if you are sending direct messages to somebody, of course, expect to be confronted and expect, really, to, to face the law. But if the messages weren't sent directly, yeah, I think it does put a slightly different spin on things. Just take it to the streets, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you very much. I know you'll handle that in the way that it needs to be handled. Your thoughts, please. Were Sky, uh, well, I mean, it was Sky that broke it, were they right? to have confronted the woman who was writing uh, rude things about the McCanns on, on Twitter. Does it make a difference that they're not on Twitter, Catherine? I think it does. I also think you've got to recognise that people who do that sort of thing aren't necessarily the most stable people. So holding them up to the same sort of scrutiny you might hold someone else up to might not be fair. It's, it's weird, because I, 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 can, I, can, I can see both sides so of the story I. very, very clearly. But I can also see a great big hurtling danger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. eight four five nine four double five five double five. Let's get the travel. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
still seeing delays on the M1 heading northbound. This is after an accident that happened a little earlier on this morning between Junction 14 for Milton Keynes and Junction 15 for Northampton. In Old Stratford, it's queuing at the moment for about a mile on the A5 heading northbound, just at the A508. Um, taking a look so far at the M25, on the sensors, that's queuing between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 20 at Kings Langley. In Park Street, the A414, that's looking quite slow moving around the Park Street roundabouts. And also in Boreham with the Barnet Bypass on camera, very slow moving between Stirling Corner and Mill Hill Circus. No reported problems or delays on the trains. And Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's half past seven. I'm Lee Agnew. The headlines, a woman from Buckinghamshire who's been given the right to have a late husband's baby says the Conservatives would be wrong to scrap the Human Rights Act. Beth Warren says her life has changed since the court's ruling. A woman accused of an online hate campaign against Madeleine McCann's parents has been found dead at a hotel. 63-year-old Brenda Leyland sent them abusive messages on Twitter. And the man in charge of the new Thameslink franchise has infuriated the unions with comments about his overcrowded trains. The chief executive of Govia Thameslink, Charles Horton, says his trains will be made more comfortable to stand up in. And the weather will be wet and windy for most of the day. Top temperatures around 14 degrees Celsius. That's 57 degrees Fahrenheit. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Formula One driver Jules Bianchi has undergone surgery on a serious head injury after being involved in an accident at the Japanese Grand Prix. Fellow drivers, including Hertfordshire's Lewis Hamilton, who won the race, says Bianchi is in their thoughts. Our Formula One correspondent James Allen says there's divided opinion on whether the race should have been stopped because of the bad weather. Jensen Button said he felt that the FIA had, had done everything correctly. There's nothing really else that they could have done. Nicky Lauda has said something similar. On the other side, Felipe Mann who's got the same manager as Jules Bianchi, who's quite upset about, about the situation. He was saying that he was calling for the safety car to be deployed about five laps before the Bianchi accident. Chelsea are five points clear at the top of the Premier League after beating Arsenal 2-0 at Stamford Bridge. Manchester United beat Everton 2-1 to record a third victory in four games. United manager Louis van Gaal says it was a nervy ending to the game. Of course, always. And, uh, and uh, they, they get uh, uh, chances from outside the box and they shoot very good. Uh, but also in this uh, matter, De Gea was uh, fantastic. There was victory for the MK Dons and draws for both Wickham and Watford. Luton Town picked up another three points after a 2-1 win at Stevenage. Hatter's manager, John Still, gave credit to the borough. They worked hard, they battled hard, they responded to their support. And, uh, you know, I, I think that they, you know, they really, really give it, a, you know, give, give it every go. But today was our day. And finally in tennis, Novak Djokovic has won the China Open title for the fifth time. Maria Sharapova won the women's title. BBC Three Counties News and Sport, more at seven o'clock. If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Put that ruddy thing away. It really annoys you. And yet that catchphrase has caught on. What, put that ruddy thing away? No. The, it's my catchphrase. I've got very um, sore bottom. And I was hoping as a friend you would investigate qualified. it. You don't need to be medi- medically qualified to see if it looks normal it or not. It sounds like it's smart. Go and see a doctor. Um, uh, so where are we this morning? What are we talking about this morning? All Just kinds have of a little stuff. round up and then we'll take a phone call and do some texts. We're and stuff. talking about uh, oh I've never seen that button before. Call yeah. me now. Oh eight four five nine four double five There's, five double five. There is a button twinkling its little eye at me down there on the f- it's right by the floor. See now it's... you've spotted it, you can't take your eyes off it, can you? I can't take my eyes off it and it's just I mean it just turns the radio and it comes back on. It's wonderful. It's the ultimate power, that's what that button is. Yeah, I wonder if I wonder if it works when JVS is on there. We'll find out. We'll find out the hard way. No, I don't. I wouldn't. It scares the you. life out of me. Don't mess with him. Uh, so your stories about buttons in general, please. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Uh, what else are we talking about? Oh, uh, we're also discussing this story, and I think Ian's going to talk to you about this in a second. Story of the park in Luton, where parents have been complaining that local street drinkers have, have started going there since they were moved on from elsewhere in the town. It looks as if the borough council is going to move them on from there as well. Are we just shifting the problem about? Well, it's, what was interesting was that Daly said that they're, they're going to look at offering them um, uh, help as well. Although, as we heard from the two gentlemen uh, this morning.
morning, they don't think they've got a problem. No, no, which no. Which is no. fine. They were just in a park at what, half past eight? Yeah, yeah. So I think it's sad. I think it is too. Yeah. Fair point about Jeremy Kyle, though. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to stick around watching that rubbish, yeah, uh, particularly whilst you're drunk. Uh, well, there was something. There was also, they were talking about the Twitter troll. Oh, yeah. Were Sky right to have confronted that woman? I think they were. Okay, here we go. I think they were. But maybe doorstepping her, maybe going up to her with a load of cameras and a microphone or a camera and a microphone, maybe that was inappropriate. Maybe they needed to talk to her uh, in a more, uh, in a safer, in a private environment. Actually, maybe it wasn't their job. Maybe it was a police's job to be talking to her in a safe and private environment. It's a good story. Though. Am I saying that? Look at that. I'm saying it's a good story. I've been here too long. Time for me to leave. Bye. Uh, it, it, it's, you know... D- OK, but they didn't name her, they said. They didn't name her, but they showed her face and they gave her Twitter handle. Yeah. So they pretty much... People who, who, who I mean, as I say, I've had abuse sent to me on Twitter from right nut jobs. And you get really vile things. stuff from people who Horrible. would not dream of saying that to your face. But the difference is, is as far as I'm aware, this woman was... The, the, the McCanns aren't on Twitter, so whatever she was saying on Twitter, I believe she was saying she suspected the McCanns had uh, had either at least been responsible by by neglect or had, had done something culpable. It has to be said as well, she's not the only one saying stuff like Loads that. Loads of people are saying it. Loads of people. And then, now there is a huge backlash even bigger backlash against the police, against Sky and against the McCanns from this woman's uh, supporters. So so could it have been done in a different way? Should it have been done in a dif- different way? Or is, is you know, do, do, do these people need to be confronted? And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just such a tough one. To, 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 I don't quite know what my thoughts are well, on and it. And that's the point, isn't it? It's still such a grey area. We're still getting used to the fact that this way of expressing your thoughts, whatever thoughts they may be, is out there and anyone can write on there. I tell you what, I don't... I mean, the question, the question I'm asking is, were Sky right to confront this woman? I don't know if there is a question. If you want to phone up and just kind of mull it over with us, if you want to phone up and just have a chat about it, because I don't quite know what my thoughts are. 08459 four double five five double five. Have we got any texts before I go to Ian? Uh, let's have a look. Let's see. Yeah, let's have a look. Boot up the old text machine. Uh, M1 is actually stationary, junction 14 before junction 13 going northbound. I've been sitting in it for 15 minutes, as someone who sent this message at 20 past seven. I don't expect much has changed in that time. Uh, and there's some others here. Oh, Maffin Hanslow. We've had Louise, Veronica, Sarah and Caroline so far. When you're playing Diane by Therapy, please. You've won five pounds. Yeah, Maffin Hanslow. Go, go to your local uh, branch of Barclays, Maff, and uh, say, uh, I am the uh, winner on Ian Lee's show this morning. I claim my five pounds and they will hand it over to you. Uh, and... And we've got a couple of others that we can't read out, but they are in response to the story about the man with the affliction that wouldn't stop. A fella had a 17-year, 17-year, 17-hour pro- problem down uh, stairs with his winkle. We'll just leave it there, shall we? Probably should. And, and that's what um, his wife said. Ian's on the line. Morning, Ian. Hello, Ian. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you very much. What would you like to say? I'm just, I was listening to your report about these guys in the, in the park, and um, I go to a place on a, a Wednesday, a health centre in a city where it's next door to the homeless shelter, and it's a health centre that deals with all the drunk, you know, the, the homeless and the drug addicts and whatever. And the reason that these people go to the parks at that time in the morning is because the homeless shelters kick them out. And um, where else should they go? And I come across these people all hanging about outside this health centre, and they don't cause any problem. It's unsightly, and they're there drinking from drinking cans of cider at nine o'clock in the morning. But I think it's nimbyism. I think it's unsightly. And people don't want to see it, and they want to. And, and, and by the council coming out and saying, well, we'll move them on, it's just moving the problem to another area. But, but I, 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 Ian, I understand what you're saying, and I'm normally one of the first people to uh, shout out nimbyism, but if they're doing it in a kiddies' playground, it, it, it is intimidating, and I wouldn't want my children playing in a playground where they, if there were a couple of drunks there. I wouldn't want it. It's unfair. They're, they're going to do it somewhere, and, you know, they're, they're, if they're in a city or a town, they're going to find a place with... You know, they're not going to do it in the street. They're going to do it where there's some sort of benches. Um, they're doing it on the swings. Up. They're sat on the swings, Ian. Yeah, that's what I mean. They'll do it where there's somewhere to sit. Um, and that'll be... That, that naturally means it's going to be some sort of park and it leads to a children's area. 
I think that these people really need help. And rather than moving them on, let's see how they can get help rather than just saying, oh, well, you will just ruin them on. That's not going to help them. Well, it's really, really upsetting when you see them in the morning. Yeah. Well, one of the ca- well, first of all, the, the the two chaps. Some of these may be homeless, but the two chaps that Justin spoke to, they have they they have homes. They live in flats. Uh, the, the council has said that they're going to offer them help, but the th- the key thing is, they don't recognise that they're alcoholics, so they don't no. think they need help. So if they are offered help, they won't accept it. I think that they. I don't believe they live in a flat. I obviously haven't met them, but I wouldn't believe that. I think well, the fella said he did. I think they've been in the homeless shelter. If you're an alcoholic and you're going to drink yourself into a stupor, you're not going to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning, are you? You're going to get up at 11 o'clock, half 11, half well, o'clock. Well, it, 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 de- it, it, dep- it depends, really. You know, some alcoholics go straight through the night, some get up early because their bodies need the alcohol. Yeah, we're guessing, we're guessing. But... I just think it's alcoholism and these people that, that are homeless and have got alcohol problems, I think we need to be addressing that rather than saying, well, yeah. let's move them on. I think it's, that's, that's just not right. So you and think you think that, that the alcoholics, let's assume they are for a second, yeah. uh, let's say the drinkers, they should be allowed to drink in the kiddies' playground? Well, if there's nowhere else, let, let's, uh, let the council look at somewhere else for them to, to drink, maybe... I don't know, they just need help. It's one of those questions. You're not going to get the correct answer to this. You're going to upset somebody with what I'm saying. I think you've got to be looking at... Uh, uh, helping them. All right, Ian, I'm going to let you go because the line's not brilliant, but um, the, the, the basic premise was that, that, that uh, they should be allowed to uh, to drink there. I think that's what he was suggesting. Uh, we have to go by the word. Those, those two chaps said that they had uh, property. I have no reason to doubt them. They probably have. Um... And Alkies, you know, they get up at any time of the day. It don't really matter. As far really. as they're concerned, they're socialising. But also, they don't think they have a problem. Now, it might, we, we might make up that they do, and it might seem obvious to us that we do. We're filling in the... Ba- Who knows? Maybe they, they were just on a big bender. We don't know. Uh, but if they don't think they've got a problem, then they won't accept help. In fact, they will be resentful of the help that's offered because... In their heads, they're fine. They're just having a little... There's nothing wrong with having a can of tenant super at, at, at 8 o'clock in the morning, in their opinion. Just having a chat with their friends, aren't they? It's like I having do, a coffee. And listen, regular listeners to this show will know I have the greatest sympathy for alcoholics and addicts of any kind. But I do think that them being in a kiddies' playground yeah. is... Um, it, 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 it's, it, I think that's, that's especially unfair. Can I just say, I think anyone who is not a kid or a parent of a child shouldn't be in the playground anyway. It's intimidating. Where I um, live, it's the teenagers and they'll sit on the uh, swings and swear and Oh, if, if there are bigger kids at the playground, uh, and I'll, I'll let them have a, way, uh, have, a, have a little go, but if they start getting too aggressive or effing and jeffing, oi! Yeah. Oi! Watch the little ones. Isn't that funny? Because I would never speak up for myself. I would never do that. But yeah. as soon as they start dropping, flipping F-bombs, yeah. whatever it might be, yeah. the mum face comes out totally. and I do speak up and I tell them to pick up their litter as well. I become my dad. Oi! Oi! Got little ones here. Watch it. What's your language? Come on, girls. It's usually girls as well. Yeah. Showing off to boys. Yeah, yeah. Who are sitting across the way. Sit yeah. together and have a chat, for heaven's sake. Isn't it funny? I wouldn't stand up. Because it's your kids, isn't it? Yeah. Saying that, I'd do it for other kids. I think I've done it when my kids have been the other side of the playground, but there's been a, a little one near me. Oi! I go all cockney. Oi! Got a little... Oi! Oi! Watch it. Do that. And they normally... Actually, they normally do pipe down, don't they? Yeah. Probably swear under their breath, but if that makes them look clever. Uh, Tim in Bronham says he's just crossed over the M1 between Junction 13 and 14, hey. and it's running well now. Hey, good well done. good for you, Tim. Thank you, mate. Uh, Phil says, today's news, whatever your opinion on it, it shows that nowadays, if you live by the keyboard, you can die by the keyboard. Well, I, I... We don't know. I mean, we don't really know what's happened. No. Well. well. But it's interesting, isn't it? That these days you've got to be See, I keep swinging back and forth. I keep swinging back and forth. Now I'm thinking, yes, we do need to shine a light on these... Uh, 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 on these. Um, I don't want to call a woman who's just taking her own life an idiot, but I, I do, we do need to shine a light on these bullies. Uh, because it, you, you cannot go around saying what you want... To... <laughs> it's so confusing! Well, the problem. Twitter gives a lot of people the illusion that they have more of a say and that they have more power in life than they actually do. Sometimes that can be a brilliant thing. But it is going to come back and bite you if you're not careful. If the fella who set up hundreds of Twitter... I know it's slightly different because the McCanns aren't on Twitter. But if the fella who a few years ago set up, who set up hundreds of Twitter accounts, every time I blocked or complained, uh, would set up a new one, hundreds of Twitter accounts, saying he wanted to, to rape my children, had killed himself, do you know what? I would have gone, OK, well, there you go. That's your... Oh, there's my phone. That's your problem. 
It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have bothered me. Do you know, I, it would have bothered me slightly, but I would have thought, well, it serves you right for being a nut job. You know, it serves you right for being so abusive and thinking you can get away with it. Uh, and boy, those are some of the milder tweets I'm, I'm telling you here. Some of the stuff he said was incredible. And if he'd been found out and exposed, got a pretty good idea who it was, but if he'd been found out and exposed and named and then done himself harm, I wouldn't yeah, have been that bothered. Because he was personally victimising you. Yeah. If you want to listen, I don't quite know where I'm going with this, or I, and we certainly, I'll be surprised if we get to an answer by nine o'clock. If you want to phone up and have a chat about it uh, and see if you can help me straighten my thoughts a bit, 08459 four double five five double five. Maybe it's this. Should you be able to say what you want online? There we go. Yeah, I'll go with that. Should you be able to say what you want online? Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 heading northbound, still looking at a rather slow moving between junction at 14 for Milton Keynes and junction 15 for Northampton. It's following an accident that happened a little earlier on this morning, still causing delays on a camera. Queuing at the moment on the A5 for about a mile, um, heading northbound at the A508. Also in Park Street, looking slow on the A414 at the Park Street roundabout. And it is queuing on the M25, heading clockwise between junction 21 for the M1 and junction 16, the M40. Taking a look at the A40 Western Avenue, that's queuing as well between Oxford Road and Gypsy Corner on camera. So far, no problems on the trains. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Nicola. 7.46, it's Monday the 6th of October. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. There's concern that Conservative plans to remove the Human Rights Act could affect the chances of people winning their cases in court. A woman accused of sending abusive messages to the parents of Madeleine McCann has been found dead by police. And the man in charge of the Thameslink line says his trains are being made more comfortable to stand up in. Gosh. More on that in a second. Let's get the weather. The Beds, Hearts and Bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning. Autumn has finally arrived in the form of a rather wet and windy day. We've already seen the rain. It's already coming. It's heavy. There's some uh, going to be quite persistent through much of the morning. Through the afternoon, it's going to continue over us on its journey eastwards. Behind it, we should get some clearer spells, but that's not going to be until around 6.30. So perhaps just before the sun sets, which is around the same time, we may see a glimmer of brightness the further west we are in Buckinghamshire. But the further east you are, we're still going to have that rain. It's an act front which is pushing eastwards it's accompanied by quite a strong southeasterly breeze as well so it's really not going to feel too pleasant as we head through the afternoon we're looking at a maximum of just 14 celsius overnight like i said that front's going to continue eastwards behind it it will clear we'll get some clear spells one or two showers there but also the wind falling much lighter so one or two mist and fog patches possible some low cloud minimum temperature down to six celsius so rather cloudy to start first for tomorrow morning with perhaps one or two heavy thundery showers as well but they will clear through midday and then we'll get some sunshine tomorrow afternoon. But temperature staying similar at around 15 Celsius. And that's your forecast. Every weekday morning, local opinions. Well, I think it's a very difficult uh, proposition. You really cannot l- allow your heart to rule your head. Local stories. I wanted to call my house Hardcore Mansions. They refused that on two separate occasions. I wasn't leaving the house through the fear as to what I would find when I came back. Local life. I bought a car within three months. It's rusty. They said that the deposit would be forthcoming. It wasn't. The JVS Show, weekdays from nine on BBC Three Counties Radio. The man in charge of the new Thameslink franchise, which runs from Bedford and through Luton and St Albans down to Brighton, well, has upset some of the unions with comments about his overcrowded trains. Charles Horton, the chief executive of Govia Thameslink, says his trains will be more comfortable to stand up in. Joining me now is Steve Headley, the Assistant General Secretary of the RMT Union. Morning, Steve. Good morning, how are you? Yeah, fine, thanks. Why does this upset you so much? Well, I think it's not just me that upsets. I think it's going to be the people who have to stand for an hour and a half on the trains. I mean, uh, surely they should be providing space for people to sit down on the trains, uh, running either more cars or more services. I mean, bearing in mind that people in uh, Britain pay, pay the most, for, not just in Europe, but anywhere in the world for their train services per kilometre. What do you propose they do in se- instead, Steve? Well, I think they should run uh, more services. They should increase the length of the trains, put on more cars on the trains. 
and perhaps make it a bit cheaper as well. Uh, there are a record number of people using the railways. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's not surprising that some people are going to have to stand up. They won't be able to, to cope with everybody, will they? Well, not not when the services are providing at the minute. No, absolutely not. What they need to do is look at look at ways that they can run more trains and make it cheaper for people. Well, how, again, how do you propose they make it cheaper for people? Well, if they run more services, and I mean, uh, if you look at these train operating companies, uh, they're, they're, they are running a massive profit and getting subsidised by the government as, as well. So I think that uh, there, there's room there. Uh, other, other services all over Europe uh, run, run the far cheaper chains than they do. But Britain. they are they are businesses, aren't they? They're, they're there to make money. You can't well, begrudge they, them that. They, they, well, well, exactly, but the fact of the matter is that 70% of the people now in, in Britain uh, want a renationalised railway where it's, oh. not run for, where it's not run for profit, but it's run for a public service. So is that the basic argument, Steve, that you, you, you're upset that it's a privatised railway? Well, I'm not upset that it's a privatised railway. What well, we always argue that we should have a nationalised service. 70% of the people in Britain are upset that it's a privatised railway and are upset that it's an ideological decision. It's costing uh, four times as much to run a privatised railway, even accounting for inflation, uh, that there is a nationalised service. But, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is that people are getting a worse service because now we're told that uh, people should be happy to stand for over an hour, an hour and a half. There is a romantic train. notion, isn't there, about nationalised railway, but, but British Rail was, was, was uh, well, it was rubbish, wasn't it? Well, not according to the government's own report, the McNulty report, which says it was uh, four times as efficient as the private sector. I mean, what you did have with British Rail was decades of underinvestment. But, it, I, I, listen, I'm old enough just to remember British Rail. It was rubbish, mm. it was awful, it was dirty, it was horrible, it was slow, it didn't work. Well, I mean, that may have been your experience, but, I mean, the government's own report, which isn't a, a report the RMT or any of trade unions commissioned, said it was over three times, or sorry, four times more efficient. Uh, it was four times deeper. And if you look at uh, what people are getting at the minute, uh, the high record fares, the highest fares in the world per kilometre, I think people do want a renationalised system. So, for you know, it's not just me saying, it's not just my opinion. Uh, opinion polls by more Maury, Guardian, uh, people like that, all show that over 70% of people want renationalisation. Steve, stay there. Catherine uh, has got a, a statement to read. Who's this from, Yeah, this Catherine? is from Govia that's now running the Thameslink. Go on, what does it say? We'll be providing more standing room and more seats, 10,000 more seats in the morning peak into London from 2018. Mm. That's because although there'll be fewer seats per carriage than on today's older cramped Thameslink trains, we'll have lots of longer mm. trains and more frequent trains. Mm. To make journeys more comfortable, we'll be doing away with the unpopular three seats in a row configuration and creating wider stand-back areas behind the doors. Wider stand-back areas are essential to allow people to get on and off the trains as they cross central London at frequencies similar to those of the Tube, with trains arriving in each direction every two to three minutes. More seats? Well, but they, what they've said is that they're going to have more seats, but also more standing room. Bumps. Yeah, but it's so, the best of both worlds. Well, well not, not if you have to stand. But not if you have well, to you stand might not have to stand, because there, there, there are more seats. Well, look, they're obviously not going to have the capacity for everybody to sit, because if you look at the logic of your own argument and, you know, stop trying to go for silly sound bites, you would say that they were going to provide more standard room. Obviously, there's going to be more people standing. Just, just remind me, Catherine, sorry, but, but, because I'm obviously chasing a silly sound bite. How, how many more seats did they say they were going to have by 10, 2018? So, Steve, that's, you, you've asked for more seats. You're going to get 10,000 more seats. Well, the capacity is going to, is, is, as, you, as you've already pointed out, the capacity is also all already at record numbers, and it's going, to, it's going to increase exponentially. So you're going to have more and more people forced to stand I'm up. I'm confused. Trains. You've asked for more seats, Steve. You, right, more, let, 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 and let, more let, services, it, and you'll get more let, seats and let, more services. Let me, let me put it to you in terms that you'll understand. Then, thank you, Steve. If, Please if, do. If if if, if, if the number of pass- <laughs> If the number of passengers is going to increase... Steve, for- Steve, keep it, keep it friendly, mate. No need to be patronising. Yeah. Come on. No, you're, you're trying to be patronising and you're just trying to be silly. No, no Steve, I'm if not. You num- said, you said, you said, you said, you said, Steve, I can do this all day. You said you want well, more you, seats. Well, uh, well if, if you're interested in making... Uh, I'm, not interested in, in being in, I'm not interested in being patronised well, and insulted you, by are, someone are who's not listening. Are you going to let me speak? You can respond to the question. Yeah, if if you've asked for more seats mm-hmm. and more services, mm-hmm. you're getting more seats and more services. So, what's your beef, Steve? Right. If the number of pa- if the number of seats are going to go up by ten thousand and the number of passengers are going to go up by a hundred thousand, it's going to leave ninety ninety thousand people without seats. Where did you get the you figure did- of a hundred thousand from? 
Well, I'm giving, I'm giving you an example. Where did you get the figure of 100,000 from? I'm giving, well, it's, it's, you just if made you it look, up. If, no, if you, look, if you look at the amount of people that they predict to be on trains in the next five or six years, we're looking at an increase of about 20,000 people on the Thames Link per year. That's what we're talking about. So in five years' time, we're going to have 100,000 more people on the trains. Steve, thanks for your time. All right, thank you. Steve Headley there, the uh, Assistant General Secretary of the RMT Union. And, what well, dare I say, it's a little bit rude. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Very rarely do I express my politics, but why do I always fall out with my socialist brothers? <laughs> Where does that come from? Uh, I don't know where it turned, but it turned, didn't it? And boy, it was hard to get it back. Oh, man alive, Steve. When did you start going for sound bites and being silly? I thought I, we were asking a question. I've never... I don't even know. I'm still not quite sure what sound bite is. Anyway, well, thank you, Catherine, and um, thank you for giving me the look to say, calm down. It's appreciated. Oh, it was disbelief, to be uh, honest. It was, uh, Dennis is on the line. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, Ian. Good morning. Are you going to have a go at me for no reason? Not at all. OK, good. No, I we're, can I just say, by the way, can I just say, we're asking, have you ever pressed the wrong button? I've got a couple of tweets here. Uh, Dave says, I know someone who pressed the wrong button and shut down an entire North Sea oil rig for three days, costing millions. Oops. And uh, Shelley says, there's a button at work I never dreamt of pressing until someone put a sticker on saying, do, do not, not turn press. off. <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? OK, guys. Dennis. Yes. Yes, sir. You were talking about people uh, getting worried about twittering, twittering people. Yeah. Why did they bother to read them? When you get a Twitter, why do you bother to read it? Well, it, well, yeah, yeah, it's easier said than done. Why? I can't. My son, unfortunately, put me onto Facebook. And I'm not interested, I'm totally disinterested with people chatting over the line to me. I don't, couldn't care less what <laughs> they think about. Chatting over the line! No, I'm just saying I'm not interested in what people's opinion of me. Right. I have my own opinion and I couldn't care less what other people think. But, but, but if you are, but you're, you don't engage in Twitter and Facebook. If you do engage in it... No, I don't. No, I just, I, uh, But if you do engage in it... Yes. Then... It basically, you are getting, you could be getting direct to your telephone r- rude messages about you. Not just rude, but really hurtful things. Well, I get loads what, of them. What, most, what, of the time, fi- most of the time, I'm most of the time, I bat them straight back. But if I'm having a bad day or it's something about my kids, then it, it hits my soul, Dennis. Well, put it this way what can they say to me that's going to hurt me? Probably nothing to you because um, you're not no, all there, but I'm a sensitive human being. I notice the damn fools. So I'm should should people okay Facebook. should people be allowed to say on Twitter what they want to say uh, in regards to anything? Yes, as long as people don't read it. But does it matter? What? If it, that's like if a tree falls down that's right. in in a, a German forest and there are no Germans there to hear it, would a French man hear it? That's right, I do. But what I'm saying to you yep. is, why do people? Like, why did they get upset about it? I'm trying to say, my son put me on Facebook, which I'm totally disinterested. Right, OK, I'm listen, to get you're off Dennis, the we've got 30 seconds, right? Yes. Your child has gone missing, presumed dead. Yes. There are people on Twitter saying you killed her. Yes. You'd be upset by that, wouldn't you? No. Oh, Dennis, I, I think you're being flippant there. You'd be, up, you'd be upset by that, surely? Should people be allowed to say what they want on the internet? 08459 455 555. And have you ever fallen out with a trade union? Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off on the M1, heading northbound, still rather slow between Junction 14 for Milton Keynes and Junction 15 for Northampton, following an accident happened a little earlier on this morning. It's queuing at the moment on the A5 for about a mile um, at the A508, heading northbound. The A1M starting to look heavy just at Junction 6 for Wellin, and in Hartford, very heavy on the A414 at the moment, just around Ware Road. Take a look at the M25, that's queuing on the sensors, heading anti-clockwise between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 16, the M40. Also, the A40's queuing heading eastbound between Oxford Road and Gypsy Corner on camera. So far, not seeing any problems or delays to the trains. Everything's running to time. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Nicola, thank you very much indeed. (laughs) 
Yeah. Still um, reeling from the uh, blast of the chat with the um, the union fella. It's another one to add to the list. Who won't come back on the show? <laughs> Ah, never mind. It all, it all makes for good listening, huh? I'm going to bring you up to my level, dear listener. Come with us. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 8 o'clock, I'm Lee Agnew. The headlines, Madeleine McCann, internet troll found dead in hotel. Concern about plans to scrap the Human Rights Act and Liberal Democrats scheme to build five garden cities in the three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman who's been accused of abusing Madeleine McCann's parents over the internet has been found dead. Brenda Leyland was named last week as one of a number of people who'd used their Twitter accounts to attack Jerry and Kate McCann. Rebecca Williams explains. A few days ago, she was a focus of a Sky News report where the reporter Martin Brunt uh, went to her house and confronted her. Now, when he asked her why she was using Twitter to abuse the McCann, she said she was entitled to do so. Now, Sky News of today said that they're saddened by the news of her death but insist it's not appropriate to comment further at this stage. A woman from Buckinghamshire who's been given the right to have her late husband's baby says the Conservatives would be wrong to scrap the Human Rights Act. Beth Warren says people don't realise how important it is. I do think that possibly sometimes it is used in the wrong way and that's why people are unhappy about it. However, we've just got to rely on law and the strength of law to interpret it in the right way. And that's exactly what Mrs Justice Hogg was able to do. Without that law, I don't think I could have won my case. The Liberal Democrats are pledging to fully reopen the Oxford to Cambridge rail line through the three counties if they win the next election. They would also create five garden cities if people want them. Paul Scoynes reports. The Lib Dems say that between 9 and 15,000 new homes would be built at each of the garden cities, potentially at Aylesbury, Leighton Buzzard, Ampthill, Bedford or Sandy. But they stress the new cities would not be imposed on communities and must have local support. Each town would get an express station on the new line, which would cost up to a billion pounds to open. Commuters on the Thameslink line are being told their trains are being made more comfortable to stand up in. Charles Horton, the chief executive of Govia, which has taken over the franchise, says he can't ever promise that passengers will get a seat. Steve Headley from the RMT union says it proves the company can't deal with the problem of overcrowding. Uh, Surely they should be providing space for people to sit down on the trains, uh, running either more cars or more services. I mean, bearing in mind that people in uh, Britain pay pay the most, not just in Europe, but anywhere in the world for their train services per kilometre. They should increase the length of the trains, put on more cars on the trains, and perhaps make it a bit cheaper as well. In sports, the Formula One driver Jules Bianchi is still in hospital after a serious accident at the Japanese Grand Prix. The race was won by Hertfordshire Lewis Hamilton, who extended his lead in the Drivers' Championship to 10 points. And the weather will be wet and windy for most of the day. Top temperatures around 14 degrees Celsius. That's 57 degrees Fahrenheit. You can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. It's full of lots of green spaces, lots of parks, lots of things for people to do. All this week, we're exploring Stevenage. Do enjoy the old town. It does have a historic atmosphere to it. Telling everyone about where you live. Our town motto is the heart of a town lies in its people. If we didn't have the people, we wouldn't have this fantastic town. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. What a busy morning we've got. Well, so far I've fallen out with uh, the head of a union and still not quite sure why. Lots to talk about this morning. Human rights. We'll be talking about human rights in a bit. Do you think we've got too many? 08459 455 555. Were Sky right to confront that woman who'd been saying... Well, unpleasant things about the McCanns online. Technically, she's not a troll, I don't think, because she wasn't sending the messages directly to the McCanns. She's now killed herself. We're, we're, we're making up that there's a connection. We don't know yet. But should you be allowed to say anything you want on the internet? 
also there are some uh, drunks in a park in Luton. They don't think they've got a problem. The mums do. The mums think they've got a problem because, well, they're intimidating and they don't want to take their kids to that park. How would you deal with that situation? One caller said, well, they should be allowed to drink where they want, really. They're doing nobody any harm. If you want to get in touch, now is an excellent, excellent time. 08459 455 555 is the phone number. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're also asking... Buttons. Your story's about finding buttons, pushing buttons, touching buttons, seeing buttons. We've already had someone that's shut down an oil rig for three days. Costing millions of pounds. 08459... Four double five five double five is the telephone number. Should you wish to give us a call? Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts, and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. see people running. No, 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 no need to run. It's, it's, it's the morning. No, everyone's running. Look at this running. You have to go upstairs, right? You have to go up. You're out of breath, love. Yeah. Oh, bless you, Catherine, for running up. The printers, guess what? Here, the printers at the BBC don't uh, don't work very well. So there's lots of running around. And if you want... You're right, Kath. Yeah. You sure? Yeah, fine. You just get your breath back. It's two flights of stairs, that. I know. Should, should we carry on? Are you going to be OK? Yeah? yeah, fine. All right, there we go. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, 08459 four double five five double five is the telephone number if you want to give us a call now. Scrapping the Human Rights Act would be a massive mistake. That's according to a Buckinghamshire woman who's been granted the chance to have her late husband's baby. Beth Warren has been speaking out in response to the Conservatives' pledge to take European Court of Human Rights uh, from UK law should they win uh, the next election. Well, joining me in the studio is Richard Stay, the Conservative Councillor for Caddington in Central Bedfordshire. Morning, Richard. Morning, Ian. Thank you very much. I saw you were caught up in the, the, the bodies running around and flying around. It makes it look like we're exciting and we know what we're doing. We... I had really seen so much activity at this time of the morning. <laughs> we, we are neither of those things. And on the line uh, is Rachel Knight, an immigration and human rights lawyer and Labour Deputy Mayor of High Wycombe. Morning, Rachel. Good morning, Ian. Rachel, let's start with you. Uh, why is the European Court of Human Rights important? The the European Court of Human Rights is very important and, and, and in fact the latest government policy document bizarrely named Protecting Human Rights in the UK um, is an ill-thought-out, immature and UKIP-pandering, uh, dangerous attack on the essence of what still makes Britain a good place to live. Um, it, it shows an alarming lack of understanding as to what human rights are all about and the important role they have to play in the stability of our country. Um, Human rights are about are about individuals, but they're also about a system, and that's what the government fails to understand. Uh, they're about they're they're an essential part of a, of a liberal democracy in which we live, and attempts to narrow these, uh, which which is what's going on at the moment, according to popular demand, will not only be unsuccessful in achieving its aims, but also very damaging to Rachel, the country at large. Let's put these uh, those points to Richard. Richard, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm sure you d- you disagree with a lot of what Rachel had to say. Well, you know, I live in a country, and as does you, and, and I hope Rachel does, that, 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 that are proud of our record on human rights over many, many years. Britain has a fantastic record on human rights, and I don't want to see that record damaged at all. What you've got to do is take a step back and look at the European Convention on Human Rights. It was a document signed after the Second World War. The Second World War was not exactly a period of, of, of enlightenment when it comes to human rights, so it was right that we put in place a very heavyweight process of ensuring that the rights of people um, were were, were protected. Over the years, uh, I'm afraid that we have a group of judges who are unaccountable to UK electors who have seen... We've seen mission creep over the years. Now, I don't want to see a lessening of human rights in the UK. I want to see that your and my rights protected probably to a greater extent than they currently are under European... Um, convention, but I don't. But I also want to see uh, that how do you how do you hold these judges to account? Mm. 
under the proposals which uh, Chris Grayling outlined last week, what we would see is a British Bill of Rights and Responsibilities, which would be laid down in law by Parliament, who are accountable to us, and judges would have to enact the law as uh, laid down by Parliament. No more and no less than that. And it certainly is not pandering to, um, uh, uh, to other agendas. This is doing what is right for the British people. And I absolutely support it. It's, I mean, Theresa May was pretty clear last week yeah. uh, that you know, her frustration and inability to throw out convicted terrorists yeah. um, and also the, uh, the requirement for us to bring in... Um, voting. For well, one of those Christmas. people she wanted to throw out was, Ab- was Abu Qatada, yeah. yep. who was found. He, he, he wasn't found guilty when he eventually went on trial in Jordan. He, he wasn't found guilty, was he? I, I agree, um, but it was right that he went and faced a trial. But why did it take quite so long to get an agreement um, with, with Jordan that they wouldn't torture um, uh, to- torture him and subject him to a, f- a fair trial? I mean, th- the answer is not to scrap human rights. The answer is that this government should uh, be looking at ways of retaining human rights and making sure that we can protect people uh, from torture. The answer is not to get rid of human rights. Quite, quite why it took so long for the government to get that agreement in the first place is the question you should be answering. Rachel, really. the, 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 the Richard does have a point. These are non-elected judge judges, aren't they? Well, the- they are. They are, and yet they they're all selected from countries. I mean, the point is, um, a, a liberal democracy has is is sort of uh, multifaceted. It has several elements to it. W- one part of it is that the government must be elected um, in a fair and free election uh, by the majority. Okay. One of the checks and balances on that is that. Um, there must be a basic level of protection for everybody, including the minority who didn't vote in the government. It's an essential part of uh, the checks and balances which exist in this country, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. It is about individual cases, but it's also about a system, and it's a terribly important part of the system that absolutely must not be watered is down. Is there a little bit of scaremongering, Richard? Because do we know, do we know the percentage of um, decisions that are made in this country that are overturned? Well, in I, Europe? It, m- much less than one. Uh, of it's the thousands like... of cases that were bought... Uh, sorry, you didn't say, Rachel. You said Richard. No, well, Rachel, if you know the answer, then we can let Richard come back. Do you yeah, know the answer? And there were eight cases last year, I believe, which um, were, where violations were found against the UK out of thousands which were bought. I mean, and the UK has a very good record on human rights. M- m- most of the uh, judgments where violations are found against countries are in countries okay. like Russia it is or something, Turkey. It, it, it is, just let me interrupt. It, it is something, Richard, like 0.5% of decisions mm. that are made yeah. in this country are overturned by Europe. So it's a tiny figure. I mean, if we read some of the newspapers, we would think it's all, you know, uh, uh, Iranian murderers who want to stay here because they've got a cat. It's not really like that, is it? They're very few and far between. I I agree, but it's not actually a matter of the quantum of number of cases. It's actually a matter of principle. And uh, to quote that well-known Conservative, um, um, Wedgwood Ben, um, if someone is going to tax me, I want to know how I can get rid of them. And if someone is going to, to uh, apply a law to me, I want to know how I can hold them to account, and I want to know how they, I can get rid of them if I don't like them. How you want to can get I, rid of human rights if you don't like I, them, I, but that's very dangerous. Well, can I just correct something that you said, Rachel, is that we are not saying that we want to scrap human rights. That is an absolute um, incorrect statement to make. Well, then, what we well, want then to hang on, Rachel, let me finish. Rachel, you can come back in, Rachel, you can come back in a second. Let yeah. me finish. What we're suggesting, and I would, I would fully support, is actually um, an enlargement of the number of human rights, but under a British Bill of Rights and Responsibilities. Now, that is right because that is then we can then hold parliamentarians to account. Parliament would set uh, the rules, and they would be enacted by British judges. I do not want to be um, uh, be told what to do by a group of unaccountable judges in Strasbourg. If, if you've read the, the paper, which I'm sure you have, um, it, it's certainly the tone of the paper is, is very much talking about um, reducing the power of Strasbourg and the number of human, uh, human rights. It's not talking about enlarging them. There's no mention that in the paper at all. In fact, the paper is not only inaccurate, uh, but it's also based on some sort of fairly alarming logical fallacies. Um, and um, it's, it's really quite frightening. Uh, you know, um, the, the, uh, if you're talking about increasing the number of human rights, the point is not that it should be, uh, human rights shouldn't be dictated by populist swing. The whole point in human rights is to protect minorities from populist swing. Is and this... that's what you're really missing here. Richard, one of the arguments that we raised this weekend is that the, the, the Conservatives are doing this just to try and claw back some votes from UKIP. Absolutely. 
absolutely. I think the, Cl- the Clacton by-election has far more to do with this than anything else. <laughs> it's, uh, it isn't, there isn't a lot of detail in there. It's, it's, fairly, um, it's fairly loosely written and uh, insubstantial and inaccurate. OK, Richard, you've got 30 seconds. Go on. Uh, well, uh, my, my final point, I, I, I disagree with Rachel's perspective on this, but the, with rights comes responsibilities. Absolutely. Which is absolutely key to what Chris Grayling has outlined, is a bill of rights and responsibilities. If, as a citizen of the UK, you have responsibilities as well as rights. And now the Labour Act that was brought in in yep. uh, the Human Rights Act, misses out on that large chunk of responsibility. It's time it was refreshed. It's time we ditched uh, the European Convention because it's outdated. Rachel, you've got 20 seconds to come back. I, I think you need to um, take, take away from that. You, you need to look at the more positive aspects of what the European Court of Human Rights has done over the last 50 years. It's done an enormous amount of good. Uh, there have been one or two cases cases which have been um, uh, written about in the media, but um, let, let's look at the more positive elements of what the U- human rights have done in our country and across Europe, where um, Britain has um, led the way in uh, uh, creating a system okay. whereby there is a greater security, not just for Britain, but for Europe. And I think we need to do everything we can to try and protect that. Rachel, we have to end it there. Thank you. That's uh, Rachel Knight, Immigration and Human Rights Lawyer, Labour Deputy Mayor of High Wycombe, Richard Stay, Conservative Councillor for Cadding. Central Bedfordshire, thank you very much indeed. Your thoughts, please, 08459 455555. Travel news for beds, hearts, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off this morning on the A5, heading northbound, queuing at the moment for about a mile um, at the A508. The M1 and looking very slow on the sensors between Junction 12 at Flittig and Junction 13 for Bedford. And we look at the A1M, that's quite heavy moving as well between Junction 10 at Baldock and Junction 6 for Welland. And the M25 heading anti-clockwise, slow moving between Junction 21, the M1, and Junction 16 for the M40. The A414 rather slow on the sensors around the Park Street roundabout and the M40 is queuing on camera from the Denham roundabout to the M25. There's no problems or delays on the trains at Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much. 8.17, it is, um, let me think, Monday the 6th of October. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman accused of sending abusive messages to the parents of Madeleine McCann has been found dead by police. There's concerns that Conservative plans to remove the Human Rights Act could affect the chances of people winning their cases in court. And unions have attacked Govia Thameslink for saying their trains are now more comfortable to stand up in. BBC Three Counties Radio. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. It's full of lots of green spaces, lots of parks, lots of things for people to do. I've never really thought about leaving. Bought me houses here and that's it. All this week, we're exploring Stevenage. I've never found anywhere that has so much to offer. Do enjoy the old town. It does have a historic atmosphere to it. Telling everyone about where you live. Beautiful local place to uh, walk our dogs around and enjoy the area. The parks and gardens are fantastic. It's very clean, it's very friendly. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. Our town motto is the heart of a town lies in its people. If we didn't have the people, we wouldn't have this fantastic town. From BBC Three Counties Radio. On FM, AM, online and digital radio. Oh dear, oh dear. This is oh. Ian Lee. What's wrong with BBC your BBC Three Counties Radio. Have an itch. That wasn't just a, a scratch you were giving it. That was a, you got fleas or something. Ooh, that was a little, little itchy. You think you've got problems? Why, what What are your problems? Oh, my downstairs. What, what? What do you mean you're downstairs? Huh? Recoil. I'm, I'm being told, I'm, don't there's hand him. gestures don't coming from him. your team. Me bum. What? Don't. Yeah, it's in a terrible state. What? Is it? People should be, listen, <laughs> look, this is serious, okay? God. This is actually serious. Listen, people, easy men, don't hear me with that straight away. People oh. should be encouraged to talk about the state of their backsides. <gasps> it takes away some of the shame and some of the embarrassment that people are feeling. I don't mind being the face of bums. Uh, what's, what's the problem you've got? I'm, ho- I'm hoping it's piles. Oh, dear. Yeah, you see? People should be allowed to have these conversations. There are yeah, men have, all over... Have it with your doctor. There are men all over beds, hearts and bucks. I'm really glad that fella is talking about the state of his backside today because it gives me the courage to talk about it. (laughs) Everyone else, enjoy your frosties. You you wait. The sales of Anusol will go up like nobody's business this morning. Thanks to me. I want some shares in that. It's true, seriously. Terrible state. Oh, dear. Yeah. Well, you you look all right. (laughs)
Well, do you, I mean, my face does. Do you want to... Do you want to... <laughs> no, I don't no, want to see. But, I mean, you're not sitting awkwardly, or... It's uncomfortable. <laughs> is he? Yeah, it is, actually. It is, yeah. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> oh, Sorry? Dear, you're right? oversharing. I'm sharing with a mate. Not technically. Uh, I'm sharing with a <laughs> colleague, a male colleague. <laughs> Just state... anyone. I'm sharing with honest. anyone the state of my backside. It was the first thing you Have told you... me this morning. Sorry, Alice? It was the first thing you said <laughs> to me this morning. <laughs> yeah, it was, good actually. Morning. <laughs> have you, have you, uh, have you ever had it before? Yes. Have you? Oh, yeah, right. I've had it before. Well, you know the feeling then, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Get your mirror out. He has already, and I've heard all about it. Thanks for bringing that up. I've got a, re- I've got a big mirror in the bathroom. Wow. <laughs> a big mirror on the bath? In oh, the bathroom, yeah. I thought it was always best to put it on the floor. I'm quite tall. <laughs> and I could... Anyway, anyway, anyway. It doesn't matter. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah. Well, anyway, I've had a nice weekend. <laughs> I had you laughing at my uncomfortable bottom. <laughs> I, saw, I expected yeah. a sympathetic handshake, a firm handshake, <laughs> or even a pat on the back. I won't be shaking your hand today, that's for sure. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Oh eight four five nine four five five double five is the phone number. What's on your show this morning? Coming up on the big phone in this morning, um, we're going to discuss this McCann troll, yeah. Brenda Leyland. And from nine this morning, the question I'm going to be asking is, was it wrong to publicly shame the McCann troll Brenda Leyland, a 63-year-old woman who was accused of targeting internet abuse at the family of Madeleine McCann, has been found dead in a hotel. Brenda Leyland, who posed under the name Sweepy Face, was found dead days after being confronted outside her home by a Sky News reporter. She told the journalist that she was entitled to do what she did. Jerry McCann has told the BBC he doesn't read comments online as he finds them upsetting. But he does think more trolls should be charged. From nine this morning, I want your reaction to this. Was it wrong to publicly shame the McCann troll, Brenda Leyland? I mean, I guess some people would argue Mm. that although it's terribly sad for her family, she is a woman who has, for a considerable amount of time, hidden behind her keyboard, sending nasty, snidey little comments to a family... Who are, or about a family yeah. who have lost... Because they're not on Twitter. A small child, And no. I do think that is an important thing. They're not on Twitter. So, as far as I'm aware, she hasn't been sending them directly to the McCanns. No, but she's she has been, it would appear, running a bit of a, a campaign against the McCanns online. Whether whether they, they're on Twitter or not, there is, of course, in a public space, the, yeah. the chance that they may well have read some of the comments or have heard about the comments. She was exposed as... Some people would argue bullies should be, stand up to bullies. And ultimately, wasn't she just bullying online? And her reaction to being exposed, it would appear, was to end her life. Mm. Well, should we feel bad for her? Should we feel bad that she was named and shamed for what she did? Or do you think it's just an unfortunate consequence of her actions? She was the one that decided she would spend so much time targeting abuse at the McCanns. She was the one who decided that she would do it for whatever reason. She's also the one who has decided to end her life. Should we feel, should we shed tears for her? From nine this morning, your views. Was it wrong to publicly shame the McCann troll Brenda Leyland? Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Thank you very much. Call oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. It's 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 a similar thing to what we've been asking uh, this morning. Uh, were Sky right to expose uh, this? Well, two things. We started off with were Sky right to expose this woman, and in terms other media outlets, and that kind of has then evolved into. Should you be able to say whatever you want online? Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five is the telephone number if uh, you want to give us a call on that. Uh, we've had some uh, text messages through on that one. Yeah, go on. Uh, here it is. Um, uh, oh, hang on a minute, no. I tell you what, should we go to Justin? Get the texts up in a we've second. We've got texts up on other things. OK, we'll so get far, to the other texts in one. a second. Justin Dealey. Mm. Hello, boss. You all right, fella? Yeah, not too bad, thank uh, you. Not too I've bad. not quite got my head around this one yet, and I'm really hoping that before nine o'clock a few people will phone up so we can um, bat it around, the, uh, the subject 
of this this woman who took her own life. The thing is, though, Ian, you, you've got how many Twitter followers have you got? You've got I've quite got, a lot. I've got forty one thousand, mate. Forty one thousand. So, yeah. so anybody at any point can can write what they want about you online. That's not right. It can't be right, can it? Has it happened to you? Yeah, I've had loads. I've had horrible stuff. People want to do all kinds of nasty stuff to my kids. <laughs> it's not right. Wh- whichever way you look at it, um, that should not be happening. Um, I've taken this one to the streets this morning. You've been asking the question, were Sky News right to confront this lady? Mixed views. Here's what people had to say. Yes, I do. Well, it's disgusting, trolls. I dis- it's a tr- disgusting habit. I don't think anyone should be suffering more than they are. Were they right to confront her before the police? I don't think so. I think it should have been handed to the police first. Would you ever go online to abuse somebody? No, 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 no. No, I wouldn't do it. It's not right. There's got to be some morals. No, if they have evidence, they should go to the police and show that there was abuse and therefore the police can then act on it. And then if there is action to be taken, then they can report on the police action. So confronting her, putting her her face out there in the public domain, that was the wrong thing to do? Yes, because even though if they've got proof, they have to prove it in court that she's actually abused someone rather than just on their suspicion. They're taking the law into their own hands then. Yes, I think Sky News uh, did the right thing. It's The outcome has been extremely sad, but yes, I believe they did the right thing. Because you've got firm beliefs that, that you can't go online and write whatever you want to. If you're going to write those things, you will pay the consequences. Somebody will find out who you are and they will name and shame you. You know, hiding behind what you're doing online is poor. It's... Um, Sad, and I don't really understand why people want to get involved in this. It's up to the police to prove if they were involved, and if not, then they, they have the right to live their lives. They've lost a child, it's a very sad event, they've got to move on. It's, it's strange that people have this need to vent anger on people for any reason at all, especially people they don't really know. They don't understand them. They don't know what they're going through. They don't know the circumstances. I'm just, uh, I've just had a couple of emails on this, just. And mm. Ken, does a, Ken does a good one here. Uh, I, I, don't have, uh, I don't claim to have an answer to a difficult free speech issue. However, my initial thoughts are, one, you have the right to express yourself... Uh, sorry, you have the right to express your opinion on the internet, but not the right to be anonymous. And two, people should be able to express their views in governments and powerful institutions without the fear of being hunted down and arrested. Oh, I don't on. know how to reconcile these two views. How many black footballers in this country? Have had to, how many black footballers in this country have had to come off Twitter because they're being racially abused well, week by week? Well, no, there are people out there yeah. who think it's perfectly acceptable to, to write what they want to whoever they want, and yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. they shouldn't be doing. Can that. I just say, th- th- those, those black footballers have not had to come off Twitter. That's been their own decision to come mm-hmm. off Twitter. They have not been forced off Twitter. They have decided they don't want to see that stuff anymore. I don't know how many there are, because I'm not aware of it. But, but they haven't been forced off Twitter. They've decided to go off Twitter. They've decided, though, because you've got somebody sitting behind a keyboard who wants to remain anonymous, sitting there writing abuse, racist abuse, to people just because they may have had a bad game. Years ago, y- you couldn't do that. Years ago, you now- chucked bananas at them. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, Seriously, years ago you chucked bananas at them. I'm not denying that for a second, but whether it's footballers, whether it's the McCanns or anybody else in a public domain, people think they have the right to sit behind their keyboard and write what they want. That is not acceptable. Phil Davison's got a solution on Facebook. Go on, Phil. He says anyone being targeted online should be able to face their abuser in the boxing ring to, quote, discuss things further. Yeah, all right, mate. Mm. Would Ian want the opportunity to face the person who said those horrible things about his children? No, I would, I would have liked the opportunity to face them, not in a boxing room, in a court of law. But, hey, guys, mm. the police were... Interesting. That's the problem, isn't it? There, there's so much of it going on that the police can't keep on top of it. You could have somebody sitting there right now making horrible, libelous comments about somebody and the police are too busy. They just can't deal with it. What about the Professor Mary Beard, who was... Um, she was uh, abused by misogynistic trolls, wasn't she, online? She's actually started speaking to one of them in particular, hasn't she? And she's, uh, he's seen the error of his ways and she's realised that actually he's not a bad bloke, he was just misguided. Mm. She did that personally. That wasn't through the police. She did it. If, if I was somebody um, in, let's just say, uh, a position of power, if I was on... If I was a major TV star, let's just say, and somebody was writing horrible things about me, things which weren't true... 
I would speak to my lawyer, I would find out who they are, and I would sue them. Simple as that. Here's something on the uh, text as well, Ian. You'll, 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 this is an interesting one. Cathy Milton Keane says, Surely mental health assessments need to be done on a person like that before reporters take it upon themselves. They don't know their background or health status or vulnerability. I really, I can't, Justin, excellent stuff. We'll speak to you before the end of the show. Thank you. Um, I'm just... I'm just um, hashtagging sweepy face on Twitter because that was her Twitter name and um, most people are on her side and there are a few anti McCann tweets we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to those in a second 08459 four double five five double four. I, I just don't know where I stand on this I seem to agree with the last person that spoke you know whatever side that is can you give us a call and help me um, work my way through this please <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Still queuing at the moment on the A5 heading northbound um, for about a mile um, at the A508. The M1 heading southbound, we're getting reports in of a lane being closed between Junction 11 for Dunstable Road and Junction 10 for Luton Airport Spur Road um, because of an accident. The A1M starting to look heavy heading southbound between Junction 10 at Bulldog and Junction 6 for Wellin. And the M25 very slow anti-clockwise between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 16 the M40 also slow on the A414 just at the Park Street roundabouts. So far, no problems on the trains. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's half past eight, I'm Lee Agnew. The headlines, a woman accused of an online hate campaign against Madeleine McCann's parents has been found dead at a hotel. 63-year-old Brenda Leyland sent them abusive messages on Twitter. A human rights lawyer from Buckinghamshire says scrapping the Human Rights Act would be a terrible decision. Rachel Knight from High Wycombe says it would be a seriously backwards move for Britain. The Liberal Democrats are pledging to fully reopen the Oxford to Cambridge rail line through the three counties if they win the next election. They would also create five garden cities if people want them at Aylesbury, Leighton Buzz at Ampthill, Bedford and Sandy. And the weather will be wet and windy for most of the day. Top temperatures around 14 degrees Celsius. That's 57 degrees Fahrenheit. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hertfordshire's Lewis Hamilton won the Japanese Grand Prix, but the race was overshadowed when French driver Jules Bianchi crashed with a recovery vehicle. He's been taken to hospital with serious head injuries. Hamilton says his thoughts are with him. It's devastating to hear. You know, we want to entertain, we want to put on a good show. We have so many fans here and, and obviously people watching, but um, and when you're in, leading the race and enjoying it, and then you hear one of your colleagues getting seriously injured, I mean, we, we never want that. And, um, yeah, so I... I I'm just going to say a big prayer for him. I hope he's okay. Chelsea have restored their five-point lead at the top of the Premier League, beating Arsenal 2-0. The match saw a confrontation between the two managers on the touchline, but the Chelsea boss, Jose Mourinho, says it was also a feisty match on the pitch. It's not Mourinho and Wenger, it's Chelsea-Arsenal. Local derby, important for the table, but also important by the emotion, emotional point of view for the supporters, for the players, for everybody. So it's normal that the game has a little bit more of, a, of temperature than other matches, but it's over, finished, no problem. There was victory for the MK Dons and draws for both Wickham and Watford. Luton Town picked up another three points after a 2-1 win at Stevenage. Hatter's manager, John Still, gave credit to the borough. They worked hard, they battled hard, they responded to their support and, uh, you know, I, I think that they... You know they've really, really give it. You know, give, give it every go. But today was our day. And finally, in golf, the world number 792, Oliver Wilson, has won his first European title. He claimed victory at the Lynx Championship at St Andrews. BBC Three Counties News and Sport. More at nine o'clock. If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Okay, so, um, I wish I hadn't pushed that button. Any stories to do with buttons? 08459 four double five five double five. Very partridge, I know, but there you go. I guess that the, the thing that, um, that seems to be uh, getting you hot under the collar is, uh, is this story. 63-year-old woman who was part of an online hate campaign against Madeleine McCann's parents has been found dead in a Leicestershire hotel room. Page 11 of The Times. We go to page 11 of The Times. If we can uh, get our fingers to work. There we go. 
Uh, a 63-year-old woman who was part of an online campaign of hate against Madeleine McCann's parents has been found dead. Now, do they use the word troll? Because I'm not sure if we are going to uh, be specific about this. I don't think she necessarily was a troll. Because not uh, a trolling, I think, is when it's you contact it's, that person directly, isn't I think it? So yeah, when it's to get a rise out of that person. Brenda Leyland's body was discovered in a Leicestershire hotel room on Saturday after she was identified as one of dozens of people accused of trolling Kate and Jerry McCann under the alias Sweepy Face. Her death came, it came days after she was tracked down to her home in Burton Overy, Leicestershire, and confronted by a Sky News correspondent. Now, the question we were asking initially is, before we kind of evolve that question into a higher level, uh, was, were Sky right to um, confront this woman and expose this woman? Did you see the footage? I saw a tiny bit of the footage. I heard about 45 seconds of it on the radio. Yeah. And my honest reaction, part of me was going, yes, get in there, well done. I felt my knee-jerk reaction, and when the, I, I, I'm kind of learning not to trust my knee-jerk reaction, but my knee-jerk reaction was, this is a good thing that's being done, because these internet bullies um, have, have, have had it too soft too long. I watched And it. then I didn't think about it beyond that. Right, OK. Didn't think about it beyond that. I watched it and thought, really, that's it? And that's what they're splashing all over Twitter? Because she didn't say anything. It was a woman getting into her car and looking annoyed. And I wonder whether it was worth it, apart from just showing her face, which is clearly what that, that was all about. Uh, someone... Uh, th- now, I don't know exactly what she was saying. Th- 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 I think the, the basis of what she was saying online was that the McCanns um, killed uh, Maddie. That's, that, I think, was the basis. Now, I don't know whether she was expressing this in a calm, rational way or whether she was being very, very nasty, OK? Someone has tweeted me, how long after a crime has gone unsolved are you allowed to have a theory about it publicly? There's a difference between publicly and targeting it to the person involved, isn't there? But the people, but the McCanns aren't on Twitter, so mm. it wasn't being targeted directly at them. Now, I don't know what this woman has said under the alias of Sweepy Face. I don't know, uh, the, the account is closed down now, so I can't see uh, how anonymous it was, and I can't see exactly what she was saying, whether it was abusive or whether it was simply putting forward hypotheses. But the fact is that Maddie is still missing. We still don't know what happened to her. So, by that rationale, it will always be too early to start pointing the finger at her parents, won't it? Let me read... I'm going to read the top five tweets when... Uh, hashtag sweepy face. These are the top five. I'm not going to censor them. I don't, I don't know what they say. I know what the first two say. Let's see what they say. Number one. Uh, rest in peace, Brenda Leyland. Hashtag sweepy face. I, too, am Spartacus. This McCann cover-up must end now. OK, these are from Twitter. Uh, Dave says, Could Sky News please explain why having an opinion that not everybody agree with, agrees with make that makes them a troll? Number three. Who elected Sky News to be judge and jury? Rest in peace, sweepy face. Troll or not, you didn't deserve to be singled out. Uh, number four, as I said last night, rest in peace, Brenda Leyland, a.k.a. sweepy face. Uh, number five is about Ed Miliband. I'm not quite sure what that's going to do. Number six, suggest you, the rest of the BBC and the rest of media do some in-depth research into true facts of the McCann case. Yeah. Sweepy face spoke the truth. So, I, I, I don't know what point five is. Uh, uh, but the first five points about this woman say uh, it was unfair and actually she was putting forward a theory. So were. I can just see the next one is actually against her. See all the pros frantically trying to delete any incriminating evidence with regards to Sweepy Face. You can't clean her inbox, the other. So the, the, one of those is, is kind of anti her. The, the majority are pro her. I don't know. I don't know. Were they right to out her? There was talk of a police investigation. Maybe they should have let the police investigation go on. Maybe they should have got in touch with her and said, we believe you've been doing this. Can we set up a chat? She would probably have said no. I don't know. Then you kind of expand it. You think of people like Matt Allwright when he goes and knocks on, on the doors of Dodge Pot. You know, I know it's a slightly different thing, but Dodge Pot people that, that, that promise to fix your car and don't or fix dodgy boilers. Should that be allowed? Should, should that be allowed to do doorstep people? But that's to people not... who are making money out of possibly deceiving the public and that's in the public interest, Still, Still, well, yeah, I suppose it is. It's Whereas a... this, you know, an internet troll, someone who is targeting someone and, and no matter how... In fact, the more horrible what they're saying is the more you've got to question whether they're the sort of person who can take that kind of pursuit by the press. You know, it's not the most stable thing to do, is it? She was... Uh, I'm just putting this forward as a, as, as a point, OK? I'm not, this isn't necessarily what I agree with. She was putting forward an opinion uh, about an unsolved crime that several people share. Mm. Not necessarily my opinion, but she was putting that opinion forward. We should be allowed to do that, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? Depends it, how you do it, I guess. 
Yeah. Look. Here's something through... Uh, 08459 four double five five double five. by the way. Here's an email from G2D. Yeah. Uh, big fan since T4, absolute legend. I think he's talking about you. Freedom of speech is one of our last freedoms. Anonymous are a huge help to every country, majorly, with different ways of doing so in their documentary. There is a difference. Some internet trolls are different and create internet memes. Is that, is that what memes. they Memes. Uh, and the bad few which ruin the name. Please read me out. What was the first line? Anonymous are a huge help to every... Yeah, what, was he, what did he say about me? That he was a big fan since T4. It's I wasn't on T4. I thought so. I wasn't on T4, you silly sausage. I had yeah, someone the other day said um, they re- some older people recognise me, uh, if you'll indulge me a slightly self indulgent tangent. And uh, they said, go, I can hear him go, go, go on, it's him. No, go, go, go on, ask him. No, you ask him, Ted. No, go on, Margaret, you ask him. Excuse me, is your name Toby? I thought it was Toby Anstis. Really? Yeah, I, I mean, get I can an- see the Theakston thing. I get Anstis a lot. Really? I get Anstis, Theakston, Dingle, Bacon. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which one hurts the most, Dingle, right? No, Dingle. I'm, 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 I like Dingle now because I've been in touch with Marlon Dingle. He gets it in reverse as well. So we kind of we're, we're kind of brothers. Um, what hurts the most? It's 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 Anstis. That one really hurts. I mean, to be at least the others have got a modicum of talent and personality. Oh, oh. youch. The Lynn's on the line. Morning, Lynn. Oh, Ooh, sorry. Just having a quick nose blow. You're having a little blow there, Lynn. Having a little bit of a blow there. That, that must be uh, when you because we discovered you've got you're quite um, um, you're quite ladylike. You've got your knockers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, very big ones. Yeah, we go. Ladies and gentlemen. So when you when you <laughs> give a little blow, that really must uh, take a lot of effort. Takes a lot of effort. Good for you. Couple of things. Tiny little joke about Jason. Sorry, Jason. Who's Jason? You know the man that had that problem with his. Oh, this is the joke. Well, really, hang on. This is twenty two. Nine. There are kids yes. in the car. I'm riding it's the no, fader. I'm clean. I'm riding the no, fader. But for those who missed it, for those, Lim, for those who missed it, there was a gentleman who um, was engorged for 17 hours, and he required Lord. medical intervention. He'd have two pints um, pumped out of him of blood. How horrible! But I wanted to say it must have been so hard for him. He didn't know whether he was coming or going. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. It must have been very, very difficult for him. It must have been very, very difficult for him. Yes. But also, I wanted to talk about this um, Twitter thing. I, I think we're. Hang on a second. Let me just check. Are we still broad? I think we're. St- there we go. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Yes. Just because you found a red button doesn't mean you have to use it. Yeah. This Twitter thing. I think it's appalling. I mean, I don't have Twitter or anything, and no. I'm not important enough for anyone to bother tweeting me anyway. No. But that lady, whatever she did, was totally unacceptable. And I don't... You said yourself, you've had people put things on Twitter threatening your children. I think there's something really sick about these people. There, are, there is something very sick about these people. Um... But why should would you, we? Should why would we? You want to? But shouldn't we be allowed? Gosh, and I, 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 shouldn't we be allowed to speak our minds about unsolved cases? Our, no, not our opinions. When, not really, because why? Well, I just think McCann's been through enough. And also, there was a thing I was reading. It's just insulting to people. It's insulting them. Yeah. And also, I was reading something in Hello Mag the other day, which I don't usually buy, but it had oh. um, George Clooney's wedding, so I wanted to have a look. Yeah? Oh, for goodness sakes, Lynn. I'm sorry, I don't normally buy it. Please forgive me. Yes. But there was a thing, an um, interview with Tamara Eccleston. Oh, yeah, the uh, the billionaire's daughter. Yeah, she's got £60 million pound house. I thought it was £6 million when I first read she it. She had a... Beautiful. She had... I once did a voiceover for a documentary about her. A documentary! She, she had a bath that cost something like a quarter of a million pounds. It was made out of... It may have been a million pounds, actually. This bath was a million pounds. It was made out of crystal. Yeah, but she's made... She's got a lot of money, so... And, yeah. and who can... Well, I wouldn't, who'd be glad with that, you know? Who could knock her? But she's got a little baby called Sophia. Yeah. She's six months old, this baby. Yeah. And somebody put on Twitter that her baby was fat. Was what? Fat. Fat? Yeah, fat is, is, baby. Is, is it fat? Of course it's not fat. Babies do get fat. No, there's a picture of it and it's got a little... You know, uh-huh. the lovely little... Well, I, 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 I do... I, I, that's unfair. 
Why but, pick on a six-month-old baby? How I, low is that? I have a real problem with celebrities who use their children to play the game. Now, unless you've been listening very, very carefully over the last two years of me being here, when I've slipped up twice, you won't know the name of my kids. No, I don't know the name You won't of know the name of my wife. No, nope, don't Because don't, don't, they're, they're, they're nothing to do with my job. And I would never... I work with someone, I've worked with someone, who was quite happy to parade her daughter in front of the paparazzi. And no, I, I, I would never do that. that. And I, I think once you do... That once you allow that, you're playing a very dangerous game. Well, because your children are your private life. They're nothing to do with anyone else. Exactly. Lynn, thank you very much indeed. I have, I have on two occasions... Three, two occasions I've let slip one of my boys' names, and once when my boy was in, he let slip the other boy's name. He didn't know the rules. But apart from that, no, no one knows the name of my kids. Very few people know the, who my wife is, because that's a, that's a crazy game to start. To, once you turn up a red carpet event with your kids, that's it, game over. It's open season on your children. I also think it ruins your f- own fun, because I can say what I want about members of my family. No one knows, no one knows the really name of your calls. family. No one knows the name of your family, because... And some, for some people they do, and that's kind of fine. But, but once you start... It, it, uh, uh, once you start naming them or allowing... Once you've allowed a photograph to be taken at a red carpet event, then your kids are, are, are public. You can't claw yeah. that back. And they're nothing to do with you lot. I don't mind talking about them, but I'm not going to tell you their names or what they look like or anything like that. None of your business. None of your business. They are cute, though. Yeah, they're well cute. Done. Well, well done to those kids. One, one of them is. The other one's right... Well, you know. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off on the M1, heading northbound, very slow moving on the speed sensors between Junction 12 for Flittick and Junction 13 for Bedford. Getting reports in of one lane being closed on the M1, heading southbound between Junction 11 for Dunstable Road and Junction 10 for Luton Airport Spur Road. Uh, the A1M's looking heavy southbound between Junction 10 at Bulldog and Junction 6 for Wellin. And on the sensors, the M25 looking heavy, heading anti-clockwise between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 16, the M40. Also, the A414 looking rather slow moving around the Park Street roundabouts. Not seeing any problems or delays on the trains. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Nicola, thank you very much. 8.46, it's uh, Monday the 6th of October, I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman accused of sending abusive messages to the parents of Madeleine McCann has been found dead by police. A human rights lawyer from Buckinghamshire says Conservative plans to scrap the Human Rights Act would be a backward step for Britain. And the RMT union has attacked Govia Thameslink for saying their trains are now more comfortable to stand up in. Let's get the weather! Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. It's a rather wet and windy day today across all three counties. Actually, we've already started to see it in most parts, just the far east that may have escaped it so far, but it's not uh, long behind, I'm afraid. We're going to get this wet and windy weather, some persistent heavy rain, accompanied by a strong southeasterly breeze through much of today. Eventually, it will clear eastwards by this evening. We may see a glimmer of brightness if you're out in Buckinghamshire, for example, uh, by the end of the day before the sun sets. But for most of us, it is going to stay uh, rather wet and windy right the way until the sun sets. Then this front's going to continue on its journey eastwards behind it. We'll get some clearer spells. The wind falls a lot lighter behind it as well, which means we could get a bit of mist and fog develop through the early hours of tomorrow morning. Bit of low cloud developing and uh, temperatures down to around 6 Celsius. For tomorrow, a rather cloudy start. We could get one or two heavy, maybe thundery showers first thing tomorrow morning, but eventually it will dry out. It will turn more showery, but we'll also see some sunshine tomorrow afternoon. And temperatures similar to today, around 14 or 15 Celsius, and that's your forecast. Every weekday from three, Roberto Peroni. Are league tables the best way to judge a school? Pal, do you have any sympathy for the Buckinghamshire golfer Ian Poulter? Police are issuing safety advice to women in Watford, but I'm fascinated by the age gap between her and her husband. Figures show that around half a million pounds were spent in Hertfordshire last year clearing up after people who dump rubbish. They just ate them. Roberto Peroni. There's been an extraordinary action on social media. My big concern is that no one ever worries about the victims. The 
whole system is designed to help the criminal. Roberto Peroni, weekdays from three, BBC Three Counties Radio. Always a good listen. Paul Scoynes has just said I look like Niall Quinn. I don't know who Niall Quinn is. Niall Quinn? Niall Quinn. Who he? Who he? Who Niall Quinn, Paul Scoynes? Who he? What do you mean? What you, what you mean, now, Quinn? We've got some reaction to the story we've been doing this morning about um, the park that's become something of a no-go Oh, this area. is a park yeah. in Luton where there are a load of boozers in there and it's intim- like, it's proper park, you know, with swings and stuff and it's, it's scaring parents and mm-hmm. children away. Uh, we've been talking about it on Twitter. These men are about as lost as it's possible to be and may have nowhere else that feels safe. Um, my husband was an alcoholic, he died, says uh, one... Oh, it's a fatal two- disease. I, mean, yeah. not, I, don't, I, I, I hope you feel that we are giving alcoholism the response it deserves. Although these gentlemen deny they're ill, yeah. I have all sympathy for alcoholics. I know, ma- I know many, but I just think a kiddies park, a playground, uh, that is that's not on. That's punishing another group of people well, unnecessarily. This person, this person's got put a number of things down, but should we hand these people out of a playground? We probably should, but I would not want to be the person to do it. And I don't think we're suggesting that at all, are we? That they should be hounded out of a playground, but you can't just move them around town, which is what seems to be happening at the moment. Uh, Tom Lay uh, says that there are more important things to concentrate trait on than this yeah uh not if uh, uh tom no actually this is really important i'll tell you why because if you are um, um a parent single or otherwise and you haven't got many options to you but one of the options you've got is to go and sit in the park for an hour with the kids and let them play on the swings while maybe you get a bit of breathing space that is that can be a lifesaver at times and let's remember we're not talking about somewhere where the children can generally run free or play in no. the street we're talking about central luton it's a little park in luton that's got some swings and a slide and a roundabout um, and as a parent, and, and I, listen, I have the kids a couple of times a week on my own. Imagine if you've got that every single day. Just having a place where you can go and put the kids on a swing and you can sit down or you can get some fresh air or they're not sat in front of CB or whatever. Just having that place you can go, right, kids, we're going out of the house for an hour. Come on. That's so vital. The other side to this one, Tom, is that um, are you saying that these people aren't important enough to worry about so they're allowed to what, kill themselves in public and we all pretend we don't notice? I think this is really important, actually. And I, uh, yeah, you know, the, the municipal parks, playgrounds for kids are vital, absolutely vital. And you don't realise that until you're a parent stuck at home with one, two, three kids every day. You know, you, it will drive you nuts. Kids, we're going. Come on, we're going to the park. Brilliant, brilliant. We need more of them. Uh, so, uh, Tom, was it Tom who sent that? Yes. You're wrong. Sorry. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. If you want to give us a call on that. Any more? Should I go to no, the No, Ollie, I think this is the Ollie that sent the email through. Ollie! Hello. What was that to say, boss? <laughs> um, uh, it was just off my phone. Sorry? Wait, wait um, you, you said, what did you send off, right? <laughs> it was sent the uh, email off. Or... What? Oh, ne- never mind, um, never mind. I- I'm a big fan of yours. I used to watch you on um, T4 in the morning before school. OK, that well, I wasn't on T4. Wait, well, you're, I remember it was just on Channel 4 or something. Yeah, yeah, I was on yeah. Channel 4 or something, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, well, I'm a big fan anyway, but I was just uh, saying about the Twitter thing, um, yeah. that I do believe that there's um, a major thing that we should have with um, some anonymous, uh, anonymous uh, I can't say it, but being anonymous because yeah. of our freedom of speech is one of our last freedoms, really, because of, if you think about every everywhere you go, you're being watched by CCTV. Yeah. Like, even if you're not doing anything wrong, that you're still on the national database and you're like basically being tracked down number by number even if you're on social media you're still part of like a big long list of numbers of people we've got on account right but so should you be but, but should you be allowed to be anonymous i believe that uh, to an extent have you ever had some I, have you ever had some i don't know if you've got kids Ollie, but have you ever had someone thre- uh, threaten to rape your children but not but but do it anonymously well i i, I wasn't like gonna like her or anything or no, but let's, let's not talk about her. Let's talk about my specific example. I have had someone who's threatened to harm my children in the most uh, uh, horrible way possible. They did it anonymously. Should that be allowed? Well, that, that well, that to be fair, there should be like a word filter or something which should they, be should they be allowed to do that? Well, uh, it, I, I'm for freedom of speech, but then again, that. Uh, with that specific example, uh, I'd say I'm against that, So you're against but... freedom of speech, because you're either for freedom of speech, where anything can be said, or then you're I'd... not. 
Men, I'd rather say I'm for it, but there should be a filter on every specific website to be able not to have certain words put through. OK, so they put, um, I want to R, star, star, E, your children. They'd get round it. There's always a um, way around these word blocks. Should the, the, Listen, if you want to say it, say it, but use your name. Have your picture so I know who I'm dealing with. Well, but then there's also the whole fact that now, like now we're a whole nation of just numbers on a database. As who cares? Well. Who cares about that? You 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 shouldn't be allowed. If you're gonna say, listen, if you're gonna say something offensive and unpleasant, unless you're questioning the, the the decisions of the government, maybe that's a different argument. But if you're gonna say something unpleasant about um uh, uh, an individual's family, uh, then you you should at least have the courage of your convictions to to have your name on there. Well, I don't disagree with that, but I'm I'm not saying I'm 100% for trolls. I'm I say that that there's a lot of trolls that get a bad name that just create like internet pictures of cats, really. Okay, Ollie, we've got we've got to end it there. Uh, those, those trolls with their internet pictures of cats, eh, Just? Wow, is that the calibre of Ian Lee fans out there? I never did T4! <laughs> I was never on T4! Oh, what was he talking about? I that was don't... you with Makita, though, wasn't it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Makita, I, I met Makita, she's delightful. Now, Justin. Yeah? This is the one we set you a long time ago. Ooh. In Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible says. Too early. <laughs> Man, boy, child, now Jesus Christ, he was born on Christmas Day. Hop now, hear the angels sing, a king is born today, and man shall live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. Ooh, <laughs> oh, it's really yeah. Christmas, Just! Spontaneous, right of applause. Oh, thank you, thank you, guys. Now, Justin, buttons, buttons, yes. buttons, yeah. but I found the button that turns off BBC Three Counties Radio. How does that go? It goes, well, it's, it's down here, it's a red button, you click it and it starts again. That's going to go horribly wrong you for you one day. You've got to stop that. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> Justin, you've taken this to the streets. Yeah. What's the happened? big issue of the day. Yeah. Random buttons and buttons that cause chaos. Two stories here. Starting off with a fella who works in a petrol station. Have a listen to this. Shiraz, you've come across a mystery button. You work at a petrol station. Tell us about this mystery button. It was like the emergency button. Unfortunately, I pressed it and the pump was closed. It was accident. <laughs> so you closed the petrol station? Yeah. And I had to call up the technical team to rectify it. So this button, what, what, shut down all the power in the petrol station? Yeah, all the pumps. For how long? Nearly half an hour. Did you feel like a right wally? <laughs> of course, it wasn't this. But, but now you've pressed that button, everybody else is fully aware of what that button can do, and you're all told, stay away from that button. Yep. Good man, thanks for being honest, take care. See you. Anya, you've pressed a button that you'd never pressed before. Tell us where you were, tell us what happened. I was at Yours Clothing in the mall in Luton and there was this button that said press if you look gorgeous so I thought it was going to call a member of staff I pressed it and it said oh you look nice <laughs> so I was surprised <laughs> We've all... Uh, Catherine, you were telling me about something your sister did. Yeah, she hit the big red button on an escalator once in uh, Deansgate, Manchester and yep. we flipped everyone off. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Oh, apparently I did that as a youngster as well, and I don't remember it. Look, if you will give kids toys with great big shiny yeah. buttons on, yeah. then this is going to happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I think I may have set off an alarm as well when I was younger, pressed, a, pressed an alarm. Did you flip everyone off? I don't think I knew how to do it at that age. Mm-hmm. It's that, isn't it? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> excellent stuff, Justin. I knew we'd get there in the end. No, we did. I was slightly disappointed that um, I didn't go onto the streets this morning about the man who had the blood drain. Thank you very oh, much well, indeed. Uh... Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we've already probably got into serious trouble about that. Last caller on this show is Nick. Morning, Nick. Morning, Nick. Uh, uh, sorry, Ian. Oh, I love... Uh, th- can, I, oh, can I just stop you? That's my favourite thing on radio. It doesn't happen enough, is when the caller says their name. I love it. I love no, it. Thank you, Nick. You've made my day. What have you got for no, us? No, it's only because I've been listening to Nick Clegg on the other channel. Oh, um, blimey. Woo, yeah. boo. He kind of grows on you. Yeah. But, uh, no, I agree entirely with what, your, uh, what you say. Uh, any, everybody should have a name on a comment online, I think. I think if they don't, it just shows, goes to show they haven't got any confidence in what they're really saying, and it's just one ego trip. But on this lady, who's unfortunately been found dead in her hotel, yeah. they must have, I think it's all speculation until we actually know what this so-called abuse was. As you say, there's abuse, there's trolling, there's uh, 
allegations and things like this, what was she actually saying? Because there must have been some, something quite substantial in what she said for Sky News to approach her in the first place. So, Nick, well, can, I, can I just say one excellent call to end on? Uh, the, the voice of reason, and I say that as a compliment. You, yeah, you're right. We, we, we need to know more about the story, don't we? Exactly, yeah. Nick, thanks very much. Bye, Take bye. care, bye-bye. Honestly, it's my favourite thing on radio phone-ins. You know it, why it is? Because I've been sitting waiting for yeah. the name. Yeah. Hello, Nick. Uh, I'm Nick. You're in. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That's that's made my day. And what a cracking phone call to end on as well. Right, that's it. That's your lot from me. Let's get some travel. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting up on the A1, heading northbound, rather slow between the Sandy Roundabouts and the Black Cat Roundabouts on the sensors at the moment. The A1M, that's looking heavy, heading southbound between Junction 10 for Bulldog and Junction 6 for Wellin. And the M25, heading anti-clockwise, that's rather heavy between Junction 21, the M1, and Junction 16 for the M40. Queuing on the North Orbital Road at the moment at Junction 21A for the M25. And the M40, that's queuing as well, heading northbound from the Denham Roundabout about to the M at 25. Taking a look so far at the trains, everything's running well across the three counties. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Nicola, thank you very much indeed. Well, it looks like we got away with it again, didn't we? Thank you for all of your calls. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Justin and Scoynes. JBS up next from us until six tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, Tata. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Ian. Good morning. Welcome to the JBS show. I'm Jonathan Vernon-Smith. Start of a new week and on today's big phone-in. Was it wrong to publicly shame the McCann troll Brenda Leyland, a 63-year-old woman who 